I forgot to move my microphone before I started, before I pressed the go live button, but hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining in, everyone, and thank you, Danny Man, for joining in. Nice to uh, see you for a first time chat, but yeah. Should be studying, but it's time. We've got Mass Effect time. And, um... Oh, I'll grab my blanket first. We'll get cosy with it. We'll get just nice. Nice and warm first, and then we'll get Carl on the line. We'll get Carl ready. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where is Discord? There we go. Oh, just game James Gandolfini in my chat with Carl. Hello. Hola, Carl. Good afternoon. I just I I love like clicking on our thing and it's just like James Gandolfini playing basketball. Like, yeah, let's go. I can't believe the man could dunk basketball. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I didn't realize. Like, I've only really seen like pictures of him from the sopranos where like he's basically the only person in the frame so like i've yeah. had no context for how tall he is but apparently the man can just get some dunks in yeah oh but yeah Sweet. welcome everyone in chat um we are going to try and figure out how to do like the multiple romances then the suicide mission so of course we won't be diving straight into that mission but We've got to, we've got to hopefully get killed by sexy times first, which is just I think activated by um just going to Morinth we... and being like, hey, world's falling apart, let's go. Yeah, I think uh, like <clears> basically <throat> your your teammates, whoever like you know you can romance, is it's started by the fact that you're going on a suicide mission. It's all it's like a Oh, we're gonna die. We might as well, you know, have some sex. You might as well, right? Why not? Like, what other excuse have you got? <laughs> it's called the suicide mission. We might as well try and just get get something in there, get the hole in the goal one last time. It's that there's not really like a better excuse, is there? Like, fuck it, we're gonna be dead. We might be dead. It, it's that classic right? thing, isn't it? Of like. Oh no, an asteroid's about to strike the Earth and kill us all. Do you want to have sex? <laughs> I think it was um, a film about that concept. It's the one starring, I think, um, Martin Freeman, I think. Uh... Like, there's an, like, an asteroid going to hit the Earth. I think it's like him and Kira Knightley, maybe. Is that the one? No, that's, I was about to say, is that the one where he gets like, the wishes? But that's Simon Pegg, isn't it? Shepherd. Yeah, I'm not. I think it might be that, but I remember like it's, the gimmick is oh, there's a I, asteroid going to hit the Earth, and just the, he gets arrested mm. by like a Jobsworth police officer. He's like, "What the fuck are you going to do? Like, the Earth's going to end in like three days." <laughs> but with like a line in that where it just shows like some like middle aged like mums and dads in the room, like, "Okay, I've got the heroin." Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, right. Like, why not? At that point, fuck it. You're dead anyway. Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Oh no, I get addicted to heroin and die in two days. <laughs> I learned hundreds of years ago to look out for myself. You can't forget just how ridiculously stacked Morris is. And I Samara. Really feel the love Sam oh yeah, Samara, sorry, my, my bad. No, because like you've got to respect the fact that this is eventually Samara's body. It is, yes, of course. Because like the you know they they just reuse the um, same model for Morin. She died because her nervous system overloaded. With an ecstasy so great, she couldn't handle it. It's like, well, that does sound like a good way to go, I guess. Just getting load overloaded with such an ecstasy that she couldn't handle it. Why tell me this? It's just something to think about. You're unique. You've lived through the impossible. If anyone could survive... Oh, now's not the time. Okay, so maybe we need to, like, I should go. launch... I think when, when you start the suicide I mission, yeah. Right. Right. I know with Morinth specifically, it needs to be like going to have a conversation with her. Whereas I think some of the other crew, they might like come to you. Like, if if we don't romance Morinth, I think Thane would like come to us and be like, "Look, before this all goes down, 
So maybe we need to hit the Omega-4 relay now. And that's when we can do the romance sections. Yes, let's find out. So, like, I've saved just beforehand. We've got that. <clears throat> but, um... Please confirm destination, Shepard. The Reaper IFF is online, but there is a chance that the Normandy may not survive the Omega-4 relay. Once we are en route, we are... No, there we I go. Guess remember, when you go through... Mm -hmm. And I actually really like that the game does it this way, because a lot of games nowadays, like, I do remember there's a couple of PlayStation games that have done it, where just, like, I remember this Horizon way. did. I've just, just This is... It, it just a big block of text comes up on, like... A pop up that goes, This is the point of no return. You want to oh, do I anything else, that. go do it now. And it's like, That's nice of you. I appreciate that over nothing, but contextualizing it here is a lot nicer. Yeah. Rather than just being a big old pop up, like, Hey, remember you're playing a video game? Remember that immersion you like? Fuck you. It's like, Okay, yeah. Just, uh, I do appreciate, again, I would rather the big pop-up come up rather than moments where like i've just had games that have sent me through the point of no return with no way of knowing well no game will ever beat that than fable 3 oh shit yeah it kind of does doesn't it yeah yeah so anyone doesn't remember in fable 3 um you know it's all about set making choices and mm -hmm. um, they tell you there's an army I'm advancing like on your kingdom people. the king the you have like 300 days and then when you say, okay, advance to the next section, it gets forward like 20 days when you've got to make more preparations, make more choices. And I think the final one is like, okay, you've got 100 days till the invasion. Do you want to go to sleep? And you select yes, and it immediately smash cuts the invasion. It skips like 100 it days. It skips like, you get like, actually, you get like a year. Yeah. And it immediately yeah. skips the final 100 days or something. Yeah, like you think every time you do it, it skips for like 20, 30 days, and like you get a choice. But okay, we started to run out of supplies. What do you mm -hmm. want to do? You have to make choices. But I remember the last one, I think literally everyone who played the game was like, fuck this. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just skips the last like 100 days. It's like um, Shadow in chat, like you were playing through Fable 3 a while ago. Did you get to that point? Because, like, I'm interested, like, how bad it was if you did get to the, the end of the game. Which... They may have fixed it. They if... may have fixed it in our patch or something. I don't, I, don't th mm, I don't think they did, as far as I'm aware. Like, it feels like one of those things, that if they didn't patch it, it's, like, just, it's one of the universal yeah. complaints about that game. That's the thing I also don't blame you, Shadow, if you never got to the end of that game, because, like, ooh, ooh. It's not great. It's a so... terrible, terrible game. Our warnings help you get avoided getting fucked over by it, which is nice. Did like, is it as bad as like we remember of just, yeah, you've got a hundred days, don't worry about it, and then the next moment it's like, oh, it's the end of the game, deal with it. Yeah, like, it, is it, it really away, as yeah. bad as we remember? Yeah, because the game doesn't tell you. It just says you want to skip to the next, and you assume you're gonna have at least one day before it does it. Mm -hmm. It just puts to your kingdom getting invaded and everyone dying. Yeah. I remember just being like, wait, 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 what? The 365 days are broken down into five playable days. Like, you think you've got 365 days and it spells it on days. You think, like, I've got plenty of time, perfect. And it's like, there's five playable segments and then you fucking don't. Just, we won't worry about those other 360 days. Like, one, do every month or something. That's fine. Or at least, you know, warn you it's going to skip all oh, the days now. Oh, warn you that the final third of the year is just, like, gone. But yeah, we can absolutely fucking do this, Mirando. We went on so many loyalty missions. Got the right team and the collector's own technology. We can do this. I hope you're right, Commander. We'll know soon enough. I'll inform you of any changes. Otherwise, we'll be there in a few hours. 121 Much days. So yeah, a third of the year. It just yeah, it just straight up just skips the whole Just gone, <laughs> without warning, yeah. without telling him. Shiny Wastrel for a raging bolt, man! What a shit Pokemon Wastrel was. It has such promise. Or Wastrel or whatever it was called. Like, I was doing a thing recently where it's like pick your favorite Pokemon of like each type from each gen. 
and just I was like, okay, I'll I'll do this thing. Um, and it got to like the flying type Pokemon in Gen Nine. I was like, they are all so shit. All of these birds are generic as fuck. Like the most interesting one is Bombardier, which is just a crane. Yep. Or Bombardier or whatever it's called. Bombardier. Shepard, I wish I had more information for you. I don't like you heading through that relay blind. What do you mean blind? We've done like everything in the game. <laughs> We've done just everything apart from like one DLC mission. Yeah, well, the DLC is really important. In this. The DLC that was just go do like three rooms of combat again. Like, don't want to spend two hours just doing more combat missions. I'm sorry. Just overload or overload or whatever it's called. I'm not Team is strong. I've got some of the best and remember, we are Paragon at the moment. I knew and you you've got those of your rewards available in chat, so every Renegade mode or Paragon mode will uh, shift 200 points either way to get us towards Paragon or Renegade. There it is. So right now we are 400 points into Paragon, so a couple of Renegade mode usages will shift us over to like neutral and even further will put us into to Renegade. So it's up to chat to let us know where we want to uh, end out this mission. The first human to take a ship through and survive. <laughs> Just join us. I do no, like that. Like, that. please. Just I join us. Normandy, if you're that eager to see it. It's a tempting offer, but it's not my place. I just wanted you to know I appreciate the mind sheen's like look regardless of I've only got a limited amount of time in this voice booth. Just I'm expensive. But every Be second I'm here costs like fifty dollars. <laughs> it's probably not an exaggeration for like you know. It's hour. probably way more than that, right? If you break it down. Approaching a mega four relay. Everyone stand by. Let's make it happen. Reaper IFF activated. Signal acknowledged. Commander, drive core just lit up like a Christmas tree. Drive core electrical charge at critical levels. Rerouting. Just, yeah, like, no human has ever survived going through this. We've had to go on an entire mission to just... I like how the... Brace for deceleration. The, like, fucking um, achievement oh, pops up. In the cutscene of like, oh, do you think you're gonna make it? Do you think you're gonna get yeah. through the Omega Four relay? And the achievement pops up like, yeah, you've done it. I do love, I do love when I like, get spoiled by like in-game mechanics. Mm -hmm. so. oh, man, that really didn't seem that bad. Like, obviously, the point is that we got the um, the IFF, which let us do that. Yeah. But yeah. When it's just like, oh no, we avoided one thing. Ships that tried to make it through the Omega Four relay. Some look ancient. I have detected an energy signature near the edge of the accretion disk. I mean, that looks pretty badass. Has to be a collector base. Take us in for a closer look. Nice and easy. Like it's such a cool visual of just the collector ship sitting in. Just the ship graveyard that also just happens to be next to this, just what black hole or whatever it is. You know, the visuals are really cool. Just like just fucking die. Careful, Jeff. We have company. <laughs> Taking evasive maneuvers. Oh, you go, you go, you Seth Green. Do it. What's up? I was about to say, I wonder what Take happened to Seth Green. The answer is he's got robot chicken money, so he's only here for us. That robot chicken and like Family Guy money as well, right? Let's give it to yeah, to be fair, he probably gets a shit ton of residuals off that. Like, the amount that Family Guy is just always on everywhere, those main cast must get like some decent residuals out of that, yeah. You'd hope so, at least, wouldn't you? You would hope so after what? 15, 20 years of being on the air? Yeah, like 30 odd seasons. Like it must, the Family Guy must have started a long time ago at this point. Engineering deck. 
Yeah, I think it's like 90 odd. Maybe I was thinking it's probably 2000s. Very I think it's early 2000s, yeah. Aye, aye, command. Early to mid noughties, I would presume. Oh, look at that. We've got the Loyal Legion. Oh, it's White Legion. Legion. The question is, who do you want to take on your final mission? Like, I'm a bit confused at where the romance point comes in. It must happen soon, right? Have we, like, it must happen, like... Maybe I'll check a guide quickly before, like, because if we have missed the romance, obviously I just want to go back and just, like, we'll skip through all these cutscenes again, but I want to see, like, the romance scenes happen. But I thought you were, like, prompted in some way. And, like, Morant, we literally went and saw Morant, and she was like, not yet. It's not yet. It's not things. time yet. And then we clicked Omega 4 relay and now we're in, going to a mission. So, uh, Romance Guide. Mass Effect 2. So, do you remember who you have romanced? Uh, I think it was Tally I've done. Hmm. Uh, Tally, Liara. I think every play for after that was Garros. But yeah, because I can tell you everyone here, um, while I'm looking it up quickly, is like on the iGen romance options, it says male shepherd, you can romance Tally, Jack, Aiden, Liara, Ashley, Kelly, Morinth, Samara, and Miranda. And then female shepherd is Garrus, Thane, Aiden, Liara, Jacob, Kelly, Morinth, and Samara. So quite a lot of that list is just shared, but that's actually a lot of options. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Hmm. Um, once you locked in a romance partner, they'll visit Shepard in the captain's cabin for the romance scene. If you haven't done the suicide mission at the Omega-4 relay, it will initiate when you start that mission. There you go. If you have done the suicide mission, the romance scene will play immediately once you lock in your romance partner. I guess it must be like you know something you can do once you've started the mission. I think we've locked it in there, right? Mm-hmm. Um and then Morinth specifically is like when do we get to Bromance Morinth? She obviously works a little bit differently. Um You know what, Lucas? Fuck it, just go. Oh, you must make sure that she survives the suicide mission. Oh, okay, maybe it's just afterwards. Maybe after she like got me to like literally blow your brains out. You're like, hell yeah. Um, once you have Moran on your team, we have to talk with her aboard the Normandy. Uh, through this, she can learn she wants to call with Shepard. I love how you like. Just everyone warns you, and just you're not gonna. My chef was like, I'm gonna do it though. The game will actually still let you try, but only after the suicide mission. Okay. So there must be some gameplay after the suicide mission happens. Which I, I thought the like, suicide I... mission was the final mission, but we'll see. I will give that, like, um, the makers the balls. I'll credit for the balls to just straight up call it a suicide mission. Mm hmm. I'll just straight up acknowledge that like, you are not going to make it. Yeah, yeah. Or you're not the intended to. And I think that the sets up good expectations of like, shit, yeah, a few members did die, but I guess like only a few members died and this was a fucking like suicide mission. So that's, that's good, right? Like, there's a good turnout for a suicide mission. Just the fact as well that you can like party wipe. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say we take our two, uh, our two lovers, our two potential lovers. Why not make them compete? Earn uh, my love. <laughs> Earn our love. Um. Uh, so at this point, it's just yeah, whatever. You know, uh, better throw. Give him. A heavy warp. No, not the Viper sniper rifle. 
Viper Sniper. Oh, can you only give, um, is it only Shepard that can get, like, the badass Super Sniper? As well as, um, because obviously uh, Legion gets it, but it doesn't appear that everyone can. Oh. Doesn't really matter, does it? This is really... That was really weird. Watch for heavy weapons. Like... It felt like we just skipped part of the mission. We're just in a boss fight. Huh. Oh no, yeah, one of the Oculuses came, got on board, that's what happens, yeah. It took me a second, because obviously we just got onto the guide and had that break, but I was like, wait, what happened? And it's like, yeah, one of those um, things managed to get into the ship. So I was like, we haven't landed or anything yet, what's going on? That is kind of scary though, imagine waking up to that thing. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a second then to remember where we were. Kinetic barriers are not designed to survive impact. To oh, but it's okay because we upgraded them. Well, I guess it's a good thing we upgraded. We're going in. Yeah, as long as you upgrade everything, you're fine. Mm -hmm. So each of these little things is like, did you do the upgrade? Otherwise, you're getting just worse and worse chances of making everything through. Come on, find some room. It's kind of cool, though. I do like it. Reroute non critical power. It does make you feel it's like a, it's a cool way to like reward you for actually putting in the work and doing the upgrades and getting to know everyone and recruiting everyone. Like, you don't get to fight in that. It makes perfect sense as well. Mm -hmm. So, oh, why, are, why aren't my crew helping me? They don't trust you. Why would yeah, they help yeah. You didn't help them? Take the helm, Edie, and keep it slow. See if we can avoid any more attention. I have detected an enemy heading for the cargo hold. Oh, no, they're coming that back. Thing again. This one's up to Shepard. Yeah, it's still really jarring of just like, oh, this one's up to Shepard, and you're just you're just in there like. There's no little cutscene of Shepard running in and being like, "Don't worry, we got this." It's just Shepard will deal with it, and then you're just in the fight. So hopefully the uh, the volume's okay for everybody here. Uh, like the game isn't too much louder than Carl. That noise is a lot louder than Carl on my end. Yeah, get the Oculus there. Yeah, yeah. That Oculus noise was like. We're about to clear the debris field. Hey, Joker, can you Whoa! fucking do it? I just turned you up a little bit, and then, like, as I was mid turning you up, it, like, you started talking. It's like, Carl is fairly low. Okay, yeah, I'll boost him up a little bit. I just think so I need to turn on my headphones a little bit then. Attention. Too late. Looks like uh, just try talking for us again, Carl. Yeah, I'm talking now. I'm talking now. Hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully that's a cool shot. A little bit better. So that is no to remind me of our oh, sorry. I can turn Carl up a little bit more if needs be, so just let us know. But also remember, I'm a few seconds behind. So if I re react to something that's a few seconds behind, folks, that's why. Yes, yeah. That sounds good. Cool. Oh, just that beam coming out. Sweet, sounds better. Cool. Time to show our new teeth. Fire the main gun. And again, like, yeah, now we have a, a new bear gun upgraded to just shoot back at them. If you don't upgrade that, this thing fucks you up. You shred your shit. Mm -hmm. I think you lose a part. Like every time you have one of these like checks, you lose a party member every time you fail it. Oh, is that what happens, right? Yeah. I remembered there was some kind of consequence, but I couldn't remember what. Give him hell, girl. I'd like, oh, maybe, you know, for example, like, Kasumi was the one dealing, like, down in the engines for the last one. So maybe it would have been like, oh, Kasumi's gone yeah. now, like. Kasumi would have died, yeah. Mm-hmm. That like, look at that. Just absolutely fucking up the collector ship this time. Massive like, this is the exact same ship that tore us apart two years ago in the intro of the game. Like, Joe, all you've been is just your shit's been doing little press ups. <laughs> just been training.
the audio is like a total mess in this game because I know I've prioritized like dialogue over like the effects and stuff, but it's even then there was like okay. barely a, 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 like even an attempt at making that sound awesome. Then the that that crash was just kind of like music. We all knew this was likely a one-way trip. I'm not throwing my life away for you, Miranda. I'll do whatever it takes to stop the collectors. I appreciate we've been keeping calling it a suicide mission, but I intend for no one to die. Yeah, no one's fucking dying on my watch. Mm -hmm. Let's just get, let's move in. Joker, let's get a groove in. Back online. Miranda, gather everyone else in the briefing room. We need a plan. That thing is like, we've crashed on the ship now. We need to figure out a fucking plan for this. Which I really appreciate that this the game does this part. Gives you a chance, like, you know, just collect, literally collect yourself. Well, and as well, it gives you actual agency over what the team does on the mission. It doesn't just yes, tell you what, who's doing what. And you have to make a choice. Like, okay, we need someone who's good at hacking for this. It's like, and you can pick the wrong person. You can pick and the wrong people for these shit, yeah. And as well, you might not have the right people. If you haven't recruited or gained everyone's loyalty and stuff like that, yeah. Like, you might have lost, like, four of your party members in that opening scene, and you might not have someone who's good at tech. Bring up your scans. You should be able to overload their critical systems if you get to the main control center here. That means going through the heart of the station, right past this massive energy signature. That's the central chamber. If our crew or any of the colonists are still alive, the collectors are probably holding them in there. Looks like there are two main routes. Might be a good idea to split up to keep the collective balance mm -hmm. and regroup in the central chamber. Just like... No good. Both routes are blocked. See these doors? The only way past is to get someone to open them from the other side. Like, okay. So, what's the problem here? It's like, yeah, we can get past these doors, but, like, yeah, do we look for alternatives, create a distraction, blow up the doors? Like, um... Yeah, fuck it, renegade option. Let's blow these doors up, fuck it. A well placed explosive should clear a path. There is insufficient ordnance on board to create an explosion capable of damaging the interior walls. If we can't blast our way through, then we'll use stealth. Someone could sneak in through this ventilation shaft here. Practically a suicide mission. I volunteer. I appreciate the thought, Jacob, but you couldn't shut down the security systems in time. We need to send a tech expert. It's your call, Commander. Who do we send into the shaft? Good old tech expert, hey? Hmm, I wonder who's going to do that. And it tells you here, is like, Tally, for example, a mechanical genius. Among the advanced engineers of the Quarians, most effective when faced with technical problems, they can be solved with the application of intelligence rather than brute force. The thing is, though, you might not have Tally. Mm. Or might not want to lose tally and send someone in who's not suited for the job because you don't want to lose it like for example yeah um jacob here is like a combat professional veteran of the alliance military in addition to training in advanced tactics and field operations he is the disciplined biotic of considerable power it's like well that doesn't particularly sound like a great option for a tech expert but you can pick him if you really want to yeah um, and maybe just maybe. maybe Legion's just the best pick for this. Are you uh, is it dealing with Geth shit though? But it's like technical expertise is what we need. Fair, go on, whack him in. Um, I think Legion as well is like probably one of the best picks you can have because Legion will never complain. Mm -hmm. like he's the only one where you can send him to do anything, even if he's not suited for it, and he won't complain. <laughs> It, it, it makes like sense. Really to Technical problems, send the robot, right? Yeah. Legion, you can hack through anything. I'm sending you into the ship. And that's the thing as well, utterly fearless. He's not scared. Acknowledged. The rest of us will break into two teams and fight down each passage. That should draw the collector's attention away from what you're doing. I'll lead the second fire team, Shepard. We'll meet up with you on the other side of the doors. Not so fast, cheerleader. Nobody wants to take orders from you. Judge us with the shade. This isn't a popularity contest. Yeah, everyone should be wearing the sunglasses. Shepard, you need someone who can command loyalty through experience. So we need someone who's leader of team two. Although, is this just the ability to pick anyone here? Well, you need someone who's got good leadership skill. 
Um, I mean, it's got to be Gareth, right? It, it, I would assume who, who so, else, right? Uh, who else do you fucking trust? He's like he's gathered a wealth of experience at an underworld investigation, sabotage, guerrilla style assaults on criminal holdings. Like veteran officer of Citadel Security, who quit to lead his own elite military group within Terminus Systems to combat crime at its source. Let's so talk about experience. Like it kind of makes say make sense to pick like a Miranda or a Zaid, so they do have some experience, but like. Garrus here, it's like he's led his own elite military group before. Plus, he's just the bro. Yeah. So, who else would you trust? Mm, I, I think Garrus is the obvious pick. Yeah, send Garrus in. Garrus. So, you know, Garrus is not going to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. Well, at least he knows what he's doing. Just, there's really no room for mistake. It's just don't fuck up. Once we're in, they're going to throw everything they have at us. If we're weak, if we're slow, if we hesitate, we'll die. It is time for payback. Renegade Shepard for life. The collectors attacked our ship. They took our crew, our friends. They think we're helpless. They are wrong. They started a war, but we are not here to finish it. We're here to make them regret. To show them and everyone That's a good line. When you go like, we're not here to finish this war, we're here to just make them regret starting it. Running, yeah, no it's like the Avengers, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. make sure you realize all that line. If we can't um, uh, save the Earth, you better damn well make sure we're going to avenge it. Mm -hmm. So, did you rip off Mass Effect? <laughs> Which presumably ripped off 50 other things, right? Yeah. I remember we were like playing through Prototype and realized like it's the same ending as Dark Knight like, Rises. <laughs> We started joking, is Christopher Nolan ripping off Prototype? Um. I don't know if we've actually, like, not locked in Thane as a romance option somehow. We might not have done, because maybe it's because, Joe, you know, when you ask if you want to fuck him, you pick no because you want to go romance Morin. Hmm. We might just be committed to a life of like only Morinth is love. I'm gonna bring him in the team just in case. Yeah, um, I think maybe you might have selected like the we'll, we'll, the option we'll talk later kind of it. thing. Yeah, you might have like not selected it because you didn't want to um uh, mm. lock yourself in one Morinth reserve. It's fine, it's fine. It is, yeah. Just a shame. But uh, who should we yeah. send in with Thane? As our team. Uh, well, yeah, I think you need to have a balanced team. Mm -hmm. While you're going, because you might need a, you might need at some point to like send someone to do a task. So it's Something probably a good is... idea to take like a tech person with you and a biotic person. Well, we're the tech person. I'm thinking Thane's got like the warp powers, so that might help like tech wise. He's got like warp and throw, and then maybe like grunt, or just the brute force. It might be worth him, yes. I think it was like there might be a bit later with that like, you need someone to hold off like the assault. Mm -hmm. We'll take you need to take a balanced team. You need to take a balanced team with you instead of a balanced team for a fire team as well. Mm -hmm. Um that all looks good to me. Also, oh, hi, Media solid. Watcher. Thank you for joining in. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel pretty safe backed up by Thane and Grunt. But yeah, it does say that we have the option to romance Thane after the suicide mission. So we will see what happens after this. Maybe there's just a chance, like, post-suicide mission to go romance whoever you want. In which case, we could go talk to Morinth, we can go talk to Thane. Maybe it's just like no one's like, you know, no one's going to get laid in this playthrough. <laughs> we better get someone. Well, I've just saved the universe and I can't get none. <laughs> we are in position. Exterior temperature slightly elevated. No obstructions detected. Second team, are you in position? In position. Meet you on the other side of those doors. That's the thing, as much as I feel like we've done everything we need to, everyone's loyal. 
I'm still just scared of fucking it up and losing someone. Well, that's what makes it so good, though, because I think even though you probably play just be like messed out like you know like ten times, mm -hmm. you're still worried. I'm still not 100 percent sure we're gonna do everything right. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about it. Like, it's one of the reasons why this game is just so fun and so like replayable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All that. I'm like I'm literally like oh yeah just. You know, I'm I'm fairly certain Garrus is an excellent choice for like the second squad leader. What if he could have been better at doing something else? And you're like, oh no, like Legion's great, but what if he his expertise could have been used elsewhere? And that's just where all the fun comes in. It really is, yeah. Oh god, my PlayStation's taken off. I'm sorry. You can't <laughs> hear that. I can't hear it at the moment. Are you so like fancy different... and still? No, I, I got to the... Um, I was at the end, like, doing the post-game. Mm. It's like, oh, I thought maybe in this one, because there's, like, more combat mechanics, maybe I'll go do the hard mode. Oh, and God. Was, like, a couple of hard mode challenges to unlock, like, the items that you need, like, Gotham a day, which is, like, the thing that gives you a free limit break every fight. It's like, okay, I need that. Right. What do I have to do to win that? It's like, okay, you have to do ten hard mode fights in a row. And I went, okay, <laughs> I'm going to watch a YouTube video and see what the fights are. And I clicked on one, and the YouTube video of someone doing it with an S rank was an hour long. Oh my god. And I went, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting 50 minutes into a combat challenge losing and having to start again. <laughs> yeah. Just, is I it just worth your time at that point? Like, point just... I just immediately uninstalled the game. When I got my 100 hours out of there. I definitely got my money's worth. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I'm not fucking spending like an hour doing a combat challenge. No, it's just, it's not worth the agony because you'll just be left it's with a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah, as well, it's not fun. So, yeah. but our mutual friend Charlie messaged me at the moment. He's up to the part where I were. Like, why the fuck have I got a control like tasty for this one bit? <laughs> like, oh, wait, wait, what's this enemy type? Why did it kill me in one hit? And I told him the gimmick to be like telling him the gimmick to be. He goes, the game doesn't tell me that. And he goes, I know. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Someone had my back there. Come on, we've got we've got to help Legion out here. Just Legion's like, please open up these valves for me. Open up all eight yeah. gates. And I think as well, like you can technically save the people's lives, but the better at tech they are, the longer you have to do it. Right. Yeah. I think you could send in like Jacob if you wanted to, but you do it, but you would have like no time. Mm, right. So you're basically making the mission just slightly easier for yourself. Oh, let's go. Let's go ahead and get that black hole generator on the go. Just for fun, why not? YOLO. Quite literally, I mean, nowadays, Shepard from this point on only lives once. Shepard never used to YOLO, but now, now she does. It would be funny just saying that to Shepard and seeing the response. Of, what do you mean you only live one? I didn't. Yeah, I got better. I got better. I, I managed to get out of it. What about you? What's your excuse? Well, it's the thing we always say, isn't it? It's, like, it's the best line in the entire game. Mm -hmm. Shepard, I thought you were dead. I got better. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Immediately murdered them. Also, yeah, you've now made me hungry, Ross, talking about pizza, baked potatoes. Oh, man. I got, like, my meals in for the week, and I went... I was in, like, Marks and Spark, and they had, like, a deal on of, like, these master dishes, and, like... Carl, you <laughs> never told me you'd gone middle class. But the thing is, it's cheaper than Tesco. I mean, that's the thing is, yeah, I, I do, like, um, Aldi and Little nowadays. Like, Tesco is, like, in town with, like, three supermarkets, but the, the Marks and Spencer is the bigger one, so it's got cheap produce. One falls. And it's really weird how, like, the one that everyone sees as being, like, um, uh, the fantasy one is cheaper for me. I mean, I don't... I think, like, Marks and Spencer's is expensive in some ways and not in others. Like, you've kind of got, to, like, each thing's cheaper in different areas, but... I always see the fancier, more expensive one as Waitrose. 
Yeah, it's like, I think if you're willing to shop around, it's fine. And because there's like three supermarkets within like walking distance to each in town. So I get my milk from one, my bread from the other. But it's just so good for produce. And I got like these pasta things. So it was like, oh man, the 400 calories, two quid. Like oh, nice. really nice, really nice cheesy pasta. And first off, my post gym, like that's after gym food for the next like five days, sorted. Mm -hmm. So my fridge is just got like five, like, it makes me like such a single man. <laughs> There's like five ready meals, but like they're the, the healthy, low calorie ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, point, fuck it, why not? Well, it cost me 20 quid and I've got my food for like, you know, for the week, including all my protein. Yeah. I think like a 20 quid weekly shop's pretty good. I spent that on my takeaway the other day. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, here we go. One final obstacle waiting on you, Shepard. Come in! Look out! Sigur Swarm! Like, get him, Legion. Yeah, Where like, that was it? always a... We need this door open now. I remember, like, the power play of living a 10-minute walk um, back in Sheffield, like, at one point, just living a 10-minute walk from that big Asda. Oh, yeah. And you just go at like 11 p.m. and be like, perfect, everything's just 90% off. The problem is that I try to do that this early in this evening, so I need to get some milk. Suppressing fire! Don't let anyone yeah, this guy went in, it's like, oh no, they've already started giving away like all the stuff. It's like, god damn it! Yeah, and then, you know, there was that time, I don't remember whether you were there or not, but we literally witnessed a this. like crowd rushing to the. Um, the, the reduced bread, yeah. bread being put out, and then a fist fight occurred, and it's yeah, like it's not fight. worth it. It's not worth it for ten p bread. It is though, because like old people who work at shops, isn't it? A lot of the takeaways go in there and get the really cheap bread for their like sandwiches the next day. Mm. So I think about like you're spending like if you can go in and get all your like, your week your day's worth of like sandwich bread for like a quid. Looks like one of the missing colonists. Oh, my friends, it's like, our mutual friend messaged me like, I just died on 1%. Oh. <laughs> Is that oh, look who it is. She's still alive. I feel like she'd be, like, be melted, wouldn't she? I get to like milkshake. So that's what happens if you like, don't make it in time, right? Yeah, they're all gone, yeah. But how funny would it be if, like, Jessica Chobot was in one of these? Because, <laughs> like, Carl says that because Jessica Chobot, no joke, is a coward on your ship in Mass Effect 3. It's so annoying. And if people don't know who Jessica Chobot was, she's, like, a very popular, like, one of those um, kind of, you know, you see the ones that are on, like, the front page of the IGN News and the, they've had, like, a multitude of different people Just... go across the same kind of, like... Okay path of like building up their recognition through being the news presenter on IGN for a few years and then going off and doing their own thing and like they were still I think doing like journalist stuff at the time but very quickly moved on to like presenter stuff and being like a judge on battle bots and shit like this yeah she's one of those people of like um uh, oh IGN like looked out and managed to hire a hot girl Let's put her in front of everything because guys will watch it. And then she's just yeah. that into being in Mass Effect. Because, like, so you know what? Fair play. I think the, there's like Naomi Kyle as well who did that. Um, I know, like, um, oh, there's another more recent person who, who's like, you know, followed that same trajectory. No, like Alana Pierce. I think I may have discovered her through some IGN news things as well. And like, it's just. I'm not disparaging anyone, it's just, it always just specifically happens to be that IGN are like, let's get the attractive women on the camera for the news. Yeah. Like 90% of the time. Yeah. And it's like, I, I get it, they're all good, talented presenters and should get a crack at it, but it is always specifically like, very attractive females on the camera, which, that's the, that's the game, right? Get that bag. Well, I've just looked her up as well. And I've, like, all she does is just present fratty reality TV shows, and she's married to a guy who does the same thing. Probably earns a shit ton of money, right? Oh, yeah. Fair play. Fair play. 
It's like she's married to a guy and it's like, oh yeah, he's known for presenting like Ninja Warrior America. That probably is a fun job that pays quite well. It's probably a piece of piss, but I, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd love to get into shit like that. If, I, if you could tell me that I'd have an easy life of just presenting reality TV shows, like sign me up. I'm sure that I'd be yeah. a bit of a graft, but I'm sure it would be an amusing graft and quite easy, decent pay. Can you imagine like having a job like that where you'd have to sit down and watch like a fun reality TV show? And then imagine that you just don't do a good job and that your name's like um, uh, Ramesh. And you're watching oh, Chessie Castle. fucking... Right, I never minded him. I think he's good on, like, panel shows. And... He's, a, he's a very good comedian, yeah. He's a good comedian, but, like, the joy that he sucked out of Takeshi's Castle sitting there and complaining that he's got to watch weird things. I was like, you're being paid to watch Takeshi's Castle and all you can be like, I don't like this guy, he's weird. And I was like... I'm not watching Takeshi's Castle anymore because you made it not fun. How did you manage to make that not fun? I was baffled by that choice of like, we're just going to get, like, Ramesh really actively talked about how, like, I am not enjoying watching this. What's the fucking point in this show? And then even the person they got alongside them, I can't remember who they were, You'll they were right still... Here. It wasn't Rob Beckett. Is he not Rob Beckett? No, no. Um, let's have a look who it was. But even they check. were still just like not very enthused. That's the thing. You think he's like known for his very deadpan delivery, which yes. works if you get him across with someone who's not deadpan. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, is this is this happening? And then. I tried to look up, is there, like, an easy way to just watch the new Takeshi's Castle just in Japanese? Yeah, can I watch it in Japanese and just hear those guys? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Davis. Oh, God. What is, like, the thing is, though, I fucking hate, like, the current glut of, like, comedian personalities we have on reality TV and stuff right now. It's not the best. They're, they're all not bad. Um... And yeah, I, I, I don't co- really. I, have I don't really know. Um, Tom Davis is like he, he was in Murder in Successville, Wonka, Paddington Two, Judge Ramesh. I didn't know it was so apparently a thing. Well, that's the problem as well. Is like all the like the because something I learned when like I again I've got some connections to the comedy industry mm-hmm. is that they all know each other, they're all friends, and they all just give each other jobs. Oh, yeah, it's just a big circle joke, right? And, like, yeah. I, I kind of respect the graph because, it's again, it's when people criticise, like, James Garner, like, well, he always hires his brother. It's like, okay, but his brother does a good job and he has a chance to give, like, his actor brother a, a job. Like, would you not do that? Yeah. Like, at least he gives a good performance. But at least he does a good job, right? But, like, a lot of the time it's just, like, it's like the Adam Sandler thing, right, of... Half of that group as friends just are either aren't funny or just phone it in because they don't need to care. Yep. It's like, yeah, I'm sure like David Spade has been funny before. Like I like him in Emperor's New Groove, for example. David Spade in like the newer Adam Sandler stuff, he, he's just there. He just doesn't give a fuck. He does not give a flying fuck. And it's, like, it's not that he's... I don't think he's a, a good comedian. I think he just doesn't care and he gets the paycheck anyway. But it just makes watching something like Grown Ups just fucking insufferable. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's that kind of comedy writing is just insufferable to me anyway. Of like, it just yeah. go for, like, the lowest common denominator kind of jokes. But it's, like, just a current lot of, like, comedic shows that we have. It's, I hate normal. all of those comedians. And like, Every single one. That's the thing. I think there's like multiple different groups of them and some of them are fine, but then there's just like, yeah, there's other groups where I'm like, I just find a lot of you really infuriating. Did you say you don't like Nish Kumar? Uh... Nish Kumar's the worst one because like, 
Nish Kumar, the had, only like, thing I've seen Nish on was Taskmaster, and he was alright in Taskmaster. He has his own show. Hmm. So, like, do you know, like, after, like, Idiot Abroad came out and every comedian realised, I can just go on holiday with my friends? Including Ramesh Rangamathan, yeah? Yeah. Um, Nish Kumar did one where the gimmick was it's him and his mate who's really sporty. Right. And the idea was, it's like, he's a really sporty influ- wannabe influencer mm-hmm. and him who's just, like, you know, the, the classic British tourist. The problem is, is that the, his mate is really, really keen to try everything. Like, they go to, like, a Shaolin monk temple, for example. Mm. It's like, oh, you think you're fit? You think you're, like, God's gift? Why don't you do this Shaolin monk training? He's like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll do the Shaolin monk training. Get his ass kicked by it. Mm-hmm. But the Shaolin monks are loving watching him do it, and Nish Kumar just sits there and makes pithy comments. Right. And it's like, why is he being paid money to do this? Why, why are you being paid money to be a wet fart? And it's like, I because guess he's... why it worked with the Carl Pilkington thing, because A, it was the first one to to really do that thing. And B, it was more that, like, he's the kind of person where he's funny to laugh at because he kind of, like, he doesn't want to do it, but he does it and then has, like, I, you know, panicky reactions or scared reactions or silly reactions. It's not that he just sits there and complains. Yeah. Complaining is part of it, but then he'll also do it and have, like, funny reactions or, like, funny reactions. Yeah, it's true. Um, we did just used to have, like, I mean, a lot of them are still on, like, Jimmy Carr, Alan Carr, all that shit, like, yeah. fucking Alan Carr. I've never been able to stand that Alan Carr, but I remember, like, recently he had, I think it was maybe, like, an Amazon Prime show coming out, and they were advertising it, like, mad everywhere. And just every time I clicked on any video, it was Alan Carr's voice, and I was like, fuck off. I was saying, like, Alan Carr, I think, is a very good comedian. Mm. But he needs to be used. He needs to be used in small doses, in in, in a very specific way. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, just he's not the star of his own show kind of um comedian, but like especially not like acted show, like host show. You could argue for like debatably, but like giving him just a TV show. Where he's like just acting as a character, it's like no, 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 no. Well, that's what happens though. It's like a lot of those they just get their own show. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, let's let's get back to it, shall we? No, it's like, not. should like we been, yeah, just say at... yeah. to Doctor Shackwas, like I don't care about you? Why would you ever do that? Why is that <laughs> the only other choice? It's such a stupid. Like, why would you ever be like no? Dr. <laughs> like, yeah, the crew has melted a long time ago. I'm just like, what happened to Shepard? I thought they were storming through the ship. They went on a tangent about Ramesh Rangamate and ruining Takeshi's castle. It's fine. It's, it's not fine. All of our ex crew are milkshakes now. It was just, I think, I just remember when you told me about Takeshi's castle and you got so mad at how unenthusiastic he is at doing I like, was so disappointed. Drop. I was so excited for Takeshi's castle to come back and not be racist, maybe. And it Everyone wasn't. Was. It wasn't maybe racist. I only watched the first episode, but it was just boring and sad to watch instead. So how do you make Takeshi's Castle boring? How? How do you make it unfun to watch? Oh, imagine complaining about getting a fucking job to be funny. Oh, de- oh dear. A milkshake brings all the gaffy. It's like. It's bringing all the collectors to the yard, but I guess the collectors already make it, so they've got to attract someone else. They're trying to bring back all, like, the heretic geth that we brainwashed. Yeah. I'll never look like crew chuck worse. It's, why is the option just to be an absolute... <laughs> <laughs> a few more just a complete sociopath. A few more seconds, I don't want to think about it. It's like... Ugh. We spent a while talking about that. Melted their bodies into grey liquid and pumped it through these tubes. Yeah, they just melted their bodies into grey liquid and started pumping it. It's like, wait, what for? Doing this? What are they doing with our genetic material? I don't know. I'm just glad you got. So the reason why you don't want to fuck Sorry. around 
but we still is, have a job um, to do. if you show up well so after far. doing like more than we can finish the job. I think more than one or two missions Joker, can you get a fix yeah. our after doing the IFF All thing um, if you just chill out and go, I'll go do all my loyalty missions and recruit everyone and stuff. You just get here and the crew's just gone. Yeah, including Dr. Chakwas. Including Chakwas and Kelly James. I, I, think, yeah. no, I think maybe, I think Chakwas might be the only one to survive to do the next game. But she might, I think she survives and tells you that the rest of the crew is dead. Right, she might be there to be like, oh, everyone else fucking melted. And like, I think Kelly Chambers dies. Um, but yeah, it's just like it's rough. You just get there and say, like, "Yeah, Shepard, you 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 didn't make it in time." It's like, what what do you mean we didn't make it in time? Like at this point, you are completely unaware. The game has given you no actual reasonable way to know that there was an actual deadline. It just kind of goes yeah. like, "Shepard, you should probably go do the the last mission." It's the video game logic, isn't it? Like, well, I've got. Well, I've got infinite time because it's a video game, right? That's just how video games kind of work. It's like, oh, you know, Link, you've got to go save Hyrule. He's like, give me a minute. I've got, like, a, a few more armor pieces to go hunt down on some cuckoos to collect. And the game just lets you do it with no consequence. Whereas this game is like, no, if you fuck around, you've got a mission to go do, Shepard. Your crew melted. Oh man, what if the the grey matter that just is melted from all the humans, what if that is just liquid cool in the ship? It's, rough. it's like, you know, like, like when people have like the fancy liquid coolers and it's like they've got like some green water flowing through the PC, do you reckon that's just this is the collector equivalent of just like the grey sludge of humans just going through the ship to make it look cool? Delicious. Um, I mean, that's the thing is, again, you. I, I guess you are meant to assume because, yeah, your crew's been kidnapped and it says, like, yeah, you should probably go do the final mission, Shepard, but at the same time, you no other video game really treats you like that without at least giving you an explicit warning on screen. There's very few games that either have that kind of consequence or have that kind of consequence and don't just, like, bring up a big timer at the corner or something. Or, yeah. like, a mission counter of, like, X amount of missions left before you fail. I think it messes up pretty much everyone, yeah. Because they don't tell you to hold back on the IFF mission either. And that's no, the kind of the ball, the beauty and the balls of the game is just... We ain't gonna help you. This game is not intended to be perfect run the first time through. Learn from your mistakes and come back, I guess. Yeah. Like, it's kind of beautiful, like, the first time you play it, you can fuck up. And that's why I was interested to, like, you know, ask people on the Discord earlier, of, like, who actually made it through first time? And it's like, the, no one did. person who said, like, oh, I, I did with warnings from friends. But, like, very few people, like, without any outside help, actually did any kind of perfect run first time. Which is kind of beautiful. Yep. And there's probably someone out there who's annoyed that they didn't get a perfect run first time. It's like, but that's the point. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is frustrating, but guess what? I got frustrated, and the moment that happened, I just went, like, almost immediately back to, like, well, I guess I need to play through again. Yep. I guess I need to go get the perfect run then. Like, I, that can't, I can't let that just sit there and mean lose Jack. Which is just, like, the sign that the game has worked. Uh, have you ever gotten the key to the orb in the first game? Nah, I prefer I, I prefer the mystery of the orb. What's the orb? I remember we mentioned it in a video, and it's one of those it's one of those moments where I got the most amount of messages about it. Where there's a random like orb on a planet, and I think I joked about it in a video of like me and my friend just danced around it, not knowing what it was, and left. And I got about like fifty like private messages like that's actually super important here's how you unlock it it's like i actually don't care cause it was 15 years ago yeah <laughs> I, just remember, I just remember this glowing orb I, I, I don't remember this i don't think i've gotten it ever no one really does yeah it's one of those like things that no one really gets it must have been mass effect one right because you could free roam planets and stuff yes yeah i really i'm, I'm confused now it adds to the vision. 
Yeah. What does that but It's one of those things that everyone always tells you about it, and it's like, it doesn't actually answer. Um, I'm just going to... Because I'm, I'm really confused about what this is and what it does. Uh, Prothean Sphere. How to activate the Prothean Ruin on Elatania. Yeah. Um... Okay, so it's on Elatania, you do this. Um, you can activate the mysterious globe nodes to retrieve the information or vision from the artifact. It can be shown a series of off of on screen text messages that detail an interesting event from the past where Pro Magnon Hunter was studying primitive human. So it just gives you like an extra vision? Is it just like a side yeah. quest thing? It boils it like just yeah, like a little like Easter egg that's hidden in the universe. I, I, I remember I mentioned it once in a fact theme video, and it's one of those things where I, just, I got the most amount of messages. People were like, did you know? Did, like, mate, it was 15 years ago. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So does it have like any actual gameplay implications? If you've like, you have more information on like the the vision that's being brought into your head, but like, does that affect anything? Not particularly. It implies that Protheans helped humanity's evolution along. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a cool bit of world building to just leave as like a really random side thing. But yeah, um, I've never heard of or never remembered hearing of it anyway. Um, and I think the two that I'm split between on a biotic specialist, I think, is either Jack or Morinth. Uh, both seem very so. capable. Like Jack can probably do it, but I think Morinth would buy the better choice. Yeah, because Morinth is essentially just probably even more powerful than Samara. Yeah, like she literally has super powers. Although, like Jack is like ridiculously powerful in herself, but... It's like, um... Her powerful innate abilities are lethal and dangerous because she has little regard for the sanctity of, or the sanctity of life and all the consequences of her actions. So does that mean that she won't give a shit about protecting other people? Hmm. But she's but you have earned a trust, so she will. We have that earned a loyalty, and she is pretending to be Samara. So I would presume that she's still like a safe choice like Samara would be. Let's try it out. Let's see, right? Fuck okay. it. Fuck it, why not? So Samara and I will take a small team through. It's like Morinth and I, but yeah, she's cosplaying as Samara. Who should lead the diversion team? Who should lead the diversion team? Right, okay. Oh. Um, select a leader for the alternate squad. Should we just leave Garrus as the leader? No, make it um, uh, Zaid. We can't make it Zaid. <laughs> just put all your eggs in the Zaid basket. Really? What does it say about no. Zaid? I'm sure he's, like, capable. An uh, ex-Alliance military and one of the galaxy's most famous bounty hunters, a veteran of decades of waging war for profit, he is determined, skilled, and deadly on the battlefield. I'm sure he knows what he's doing, right? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep it so the call is a little bit louder than the gay voice volume, but I can turn it up a little bit. Um, you know what? Let's put it to a vote. Chat. You don't have to say. You don't Chat, have to do we that. make... No, 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 Carl, Carl. No, Carl. Do we make Zaid the leader of the second... Well, the specialist well, squad? Do... Uh, should Zaid lead? It even rhymes, Carl. Should Zaid lead? You know should what? Zaid lead? No, you said it now. Now I'm in. <laughs> uh, so we'll give everyone exactly one minute to get into chat and vote. Should Zaid lead? Because putting all our eggs in just the mercenary basket. Hey, is what Avalanche did. Yeah. Uh, so they are just leading the alternate squad. So they will essentially what uh, like the distraction squad that like. Garrus was leading earlier. It's like, who's going to be the new leader of the alternate squad? The idea of making Garrus, like him do it so fucking No, funny. that's the thing. <laughs> is like, Zaid, 
complete asshole. We don't like him, but he is a he is a pretty badass mercenary and a veteran. And I don't think I've ever fucking picked him to do any job in this mission. It's like Garrus is the obvious choice, but Zaid. He's right there. Call. If Zaid fucks this up, it's on you and chat. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> You're the one who planted this seed. And you know what, chat oh. obliged. I'll keep the defenders busy. Move. What about me and the rest of the crew, Shepard? We're in no shape to fight. Commander, we have enough systems back online to do a pickup, but we so I'm okay with that. We can't afford to go back, Shepard. Not now. Um. Oh fuck. What is it? I mean, the mission comes first, or I'll have someone escort you back. You've got enough people on your team. You can send someone to escort. I mean, that's like, the thing. Sure. We've been playing Renegade, but generally when we've been playing Renegade, we've we've still been trying to stick to the treat the crew right. Of course, yeah. You'll never make it without help. I'll send someone with you. Send someone with us. Send Jacob. Oh no. What's send Jacob in? What the fuck he's doing? <laughs> I mean, he is a combat professional and a veteran of the Alliance military. Yeah, like he's like Jacob's on the left now. And I'm not going to miss him. Yeah. Okay, like, that's the it. biggest bonus, right? Is I'm not gonna miss it. And he's good at fighting. Joker, he is, yeah. Send me the location of the landing zone. We'll meet you there. We've all got our assignments. Let's move out. No, fuck it. Why not? Jacob's just gone. I like the implication that that just means he's dead. He's not obviously like the game would would let you know, but I just like the implication of like, oh, he's not. Uh, like, got the uh, little escort thing above his silhouette. It's just Jacob's been removed. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool, though, isn't it? Like, you just slowly see your party start to dwindle. Mm hmm. It is very cool. And really, yeah, like, the really thing is, he is, it. yeah, he is a veteran. He knows what he's doing. Like, he does know the crew. He, I, I don't think Jacob is bad for that kind of job. Yeah, although probably we should have sent Zaid to do that because, like, you're being fucking paid to do a job. These people stay alive and you get paid for <laughs> True, yeah, true. Yeah, so, you know what? Let's bring two new people in. Who do you want to bring, Carl? Um, I think Morden. Morden and um, Jack. Morden and Jack. Okay, yeah. There we go. Keep, keep the cool shades on Jack, I think. You, you've got to do it. She needs them. Very important. Very important that she wear those shades. Yeah, I can have a plasma shotgun. Why not? Excellent. Level up. What? Uh... Why not? Let's just make our cryoblast. Um, shockwave, yes. Heavy shockwave. Uh, he's not going to level up in time to get one of those four shots, so we might as well just power up incinerate. Why not? There we go. So we got Samara providing us with that biotic barrier. Just keep inside of this. Oh, looks so fucking cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. I suppose again, I think if you like get someone who's really shit, it like the circle is tiny. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Make... Yeah, it's like the the worse they are as a biotic, the smaller the area you've got to stay safe is. Whereas like the funny thing is, you could make Tally do this. <laughs> like, but Shepard, I'm not like I'm not a biotic. It's like I don't care. Do it. And like, there is obviously limits to it. Of you cannot make Legion do this because Legion has literally zero biotic potential. Yeah, yes. But there are some no, people that you get the chance of like, oh, they're really just bad at this, and oh, you can just make them. them do it anyway. And some of them, it's just you don't have 
anyone else. Mm -hmm. They're the only person you have who can do it. Especially if, yeah, you didn't recruit everyone or you didn't make everyone loyal because you only want to pick people that are loyal to you to do this. And if you pick someone that's not loyal, they're going to, like, fuck up or maybe just panic or something like that. Or, uh, I mean, someone like, I, I mean, not Morant. Morant is a bad example because you don't get a loyalty mission for Morant. But, you know, maybe, for example, like, if Zaid's not loyal, he might just be like, this isn't worth the money. And he fucks off, yeah. And he actively just is like, betrays you. I don't know. Like, I can't remember the exact specifics of it all, but if you don't keep people loyal and you select them to have major uh, responsibilities, it will go wrong. Yeah, because they're like, fuck this. Because mm -hmm. that's it, they'll just crumble in the face of, like, danger, because they have no loyalty. It's like, fuck it, I'm running. It's like, well, I, I have no allegiance to this mission or to you, and shit's going the foot down. So, sorry. But I'm going to put myself first. Whereas, when they're loyal to Shepard, that means that they will put Shepard on the mission first. Yeah, because you like, you know, they, you help them so they'll help you. Mm -hmm. And again, this is why most people get caught on the whole crew milkshake kind of situation. Is because you want to recruit everybody and you want to make them all loyal, but you have the best possibility of keeping them alive. And in my eyes, it's not a perfect run if you don't keep that the extra quote unquote crew alive. Yeah, because like, yeah, you kept the main crew alive, but your responsibility was for your entire crew. Yeah, so you don't talk to those other people much. They don't want missions with you, but they help. You're still their commander, right? And they are trusting you, and you just let them get get milkified. Taking cover. Let me know when you're ready to move. You're leaving the barrier. Oh yeah, the, the intentional chatter from the Reaper every now and then, or like the back talk from just the Harbingers and stuff, is great. I just oh well, you, you think that you know what you're doing, you think that you're safe. Just no, the Harbinger's coming in. What you want about? Enjoy. Harbinger, how many times have you got to directly into them and we instantly melt your collectors to just realise maybe that this isn't going to work? I always respect Harbinger though for always being like, you know what? I'm not going down. I mean you would. But how many times have, how many times have to teach you this lesson, old man? Let's go. And just as much as this mission is just corridors in combat, like the interstitials and the, the actual RPG element of choosing who does what responsibility is really fucking cool. It adds like a lot of extra to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. like every other mission is like, oh, why do we keep having to do these combat missions? But the fact that this can pause the mission and give you like actual choice and actual consequences it's what makes it so memorable and it's what i wish we could get more of in the future with mass effect is more of a blending between the combat and the rpg stuff of like making things matter more and not just making a combat encounter something you need to just fucking get through shotgun lucas who needs a shotgun that would be silly. Nothing can stop me. So silly to use a shotgun in close quarters. It'd be very funny, that. <laughs> Why would we ever need a shotgun? You just hit them, right? Punch these husks. I love that line from Mordin. Should burn nicely when he uses incinerate. No question, just yeah, that, this'll burn up nicely. It's kind of his job, right? It is, yeah. I wish I were down with. All clear. Let me know when you're ready to I'm with bulky. Bulky uh. 
Moving up, Commander. Shout out to Morant for just using Samara's voice lines here. <laughs> it's right, yeah. Incoming. No, it's all good. Like, I, uh... You know, it's, it's one of those things of, as people have seen many a time in this playthrough, when it comes to Mass Effect, I kind of just, like, forget that death is an option in combat sometimes of just... For the most part, you kind of don't need to worry. And then every now and then it just really catches me out and I die out of nowhere. I just, I kind of just stand in the middle. Don't swap weapons. Don't really give a shit about anything. And just press powers. And that's kind of how I treat most Mass Effect combat. When I probably should treat it more seriously than that, but... A lot of the time it's just... Yeah, they did put more effort into it, but... Most, most of the time, combat isn't that intensive in Mass Effect where you can just get away with it. Hold on, we're almost there. Oh, hmm. this cutscene. Shepherd, we need so I think this guy got shit by Otic. They die in this moment. I think so. Yeah. I think they have to die to keep you safe. They're pushing. Keep it up. Well, we should have just picked Jacob. Just let him die. It would have been a mercy. I think Jacob's, Jacob's a pretty good biotic. I think he's a, an okay biotic. And if you got his loyalty, I think he does pull it off. But probably poorly, whereas Samara and Morant are just like, absolutely fuck you. You it had a zero a chance. I think Samara and Jack are like the two prime options, and then Miranda, like, maybe just before, uh, just after them. What's your position? Fuck's sake, Zaid. We're coming, just hold on. If this was Gareth. No, what, Zaid's like a like a legendary mercenary who's killed all sorts of bollocks. Yeah, no, that's the thing. They make it through okay. Oh no, Zaid's hurt. Too many of them. Shields oh no, we don't want to lose Zaid. Not Zaid. Oh shit. Is he actually dead? Something like this. Almost there, Shepard. We have to keep going. We got Zaid killed! Wait, what? Oh no! Call it, chat! This is on you! Are you at the rendezvous? Wait a minute, but that means that all the people all the people who's protecting died, right? No, they like they, they jumped through the door. Oh, okay. Now let's make it count. Taylor's the Jacob's group made it with zero casualties. You all fucking did this! So who else died? Just Zaid? I think it was just Zaid, but I'm gonna have. I don't 100% yeah, know Zaid right now, but only Zaid died on screen. Yeah, Zaid was leading his own team, right? Oh no, someone's gotta hold the door. You got Zaid killed! I don't give a shit oh, about no, Zaid, but no. we. That means we didn't make the perfect run, Carl. Do you know what? That makes me more interesting. Someone's got to hold the door. Well, this sounds like a job for Zaid. Oh, no. <laughs> no, wait. Zaid, do you reckon you can just do it while you're dying, Zaid? They just put a grenade in his hand. Yeah, why do things always die when Carl joins the stream? Pick a team to go with you, Shepard. Everyone else can bunker down here and cover your back. So I think this is the big decision. No, oh, the big wreck silhouette of Zaid. He's just fucking dead. Yeah, oh, God. So you need to pick the fucking badasses to hold the line. Jesus Christ. Should we pick Zaid? No, what you what you do is you just make Grunt do it on his own. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Grunt is just selection number one, right? Let's yeah, give him a costume change mid mission. Like Grunt is like the obvious choice for this, or like a Krogan fucking battle master. And I would say maybe the next two in terms of like just pure, just power and prowess is probably Thane and Jack, right? I think Jack would like be an absolute fucking good choice. I think Thane, he's a like he's a scalpel. You need a sledgehammer for this. Hmm. I think he might yeah, be Gareth. Garrus might be a good shout. Yeah. Just because, like you know, just the tactical expertise. Mm -hmm. True. Let's let's go with Garrus. Give him all the costume change, shall we? Battle damage, Garrus. Oh, it's two. Oh, it's our squad. Right. Okay. This is not who's. This is our squad. Okay, so in which case, you leave Grunt. Mm -hmm. 
take Mordin with you then and Tally because they're smart and you might need smart people. You need the tough guys at the back and you have the smart people at the front. But we don't. That's just like a lot of, a lot of tech powers. It is. But I feel like you're going to need some more tech. Everyone else holds the door. Um, maybe if we take like Ali and Kasumi? Yeah, it could work. Like, who the like, fuck's gonna like? Yeah, cause if you need to send someone ahead, like assume is like the obvious choice. Is that right? I guess. And like, I don't. Kasumi is not much in terms of just straight up powerhouse, right? Just go, go with your gut. I'm gonna say Kasumi and Tally. Yeah. Get the, hooded, yeah, the hooded, hooded heroes hooded. back. Get the hood squad back. Just to be fair, like the rest of the people you're leaving behind, you're leaving behind a fucking army. Yeah, right. So I legit think Grunt could do it on his own. Kasumi does exist, yeah. And that's the thing, is like, Kasumi's the DLC character that like exists and we care about. Zaid is like the one where it's like, oh no, Zaid died. It's, I more care because it's like, oh no, we didn't get the perfect run. Yeah, he's still funny about the only one we lost so far. He's, he's like, I'm sorry, Chef, but I couldn't do it. You're like, I'm sorry, who are you again? It's like, what was your name? Sorry. Oh dear, we ne we you know we never spoke, sir. I'm ready, Commander. Me he too. showed just Can the absolute so shit show that he was in the end. Like all this bullshit of like. Oh, I'm, I'm the best mercenary in the world, man. He's like, I'm just the best. It's like, yeah. He literally, he starship troop with it. He's like, don't you want to die, you dirty ape? Um, no, but like the okay. perfect suicide mission run. We don't we don't okay. talk about the Rex incident anymore. We we got rid of Ashley, okay? We yeah. tied up that, uh, that, that loop is done. But you know what? The universe was balanced. Mm-hmm. Uh, we circled that one and just forgot about it. You know, people died, make it fucking count. Zaid! Yeah, do it Zaid, Zaid died. Do you remember that guy that never spoke to any of you? I don't think any of you ever interacted, but Zaid's dead. Right? He was only here because we paid him. <laughs> Words shouldn't matter. People have died. Losing our friends isn't enough. If that doesn't make you want payback, what do we it's do? It's kind of hilarious that you've lost that. Like, that's amazing. That's legit amazing. <laughs> Who were you supposed to pick then for that? Probably some like, like Garrus. But like, like he's like a legendary like. But he's not a leader. Outlaw. I guess he's not now. He's not a leader. He's just soldier. Like he's a good soldier. He's not a good leader. I mean, the loyalty mission for Zaid is, oh, this is the one person I've ever been a friend with. I'm going to go blow him up. Garrus or Miranda always survive. Yeah, like Garrus and Miranda seem like good picks, but Zaid, I was like, I get that he's a good, like, you know, mercenary, but this doesn't seem like the right pick, which is why I was hesitant. You know what, though? We got the funny outcome. We did. I'm <laughs> just like, oh, RIP. Just the funny outcome. Anyway, like moving on. The fact that you chatted so much bollocks about being the greatest mercenary ever. We had him for one mission and then he died. Like the only thing he did is just immediately that I love that. That's like <laughs> legitimately amazing. Kind of poetic, right? The collectors blindside their targets. Hit and run. As powerful as they are, they're cowards. Look at that fucking squad that we're leaving behind. That's you. If only there was some kind of like forgettable mercenary within their ranks. Like, he's just he's so fucking funny that he died. I, I legit think he's so funny that he died. One way or another, it ends. And it was so fast, it was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. Look. Like, he could even die in a cool way. He could. Still, though. Please, please stop spoiling it for everyone. 
Let, let us experience it. No, let it's, us do it's, the close on our own. It's, it's one of those of like, I, I don't mind when it's like, here's what would have happened. Like, that's like. I don't need to know. I don't need to. Previous back spoilers. Back I'm all in on Zaid. I kind of wish it was the other way around though. With just one moment in the game, you suddenly have 16 party members. Man, that would be cool. It's like the one thing that, um, again, like I know that it's in the PC version. I don't particularly like the idea of sitting the game, sitting and playing the game on PC at my desk, and also my yeah. PC is not great for gaming. But like the one thing that I found out that the um, Battlefield, um, like complete collection has was a PC exclusive feature for Battlefront 2, which was XL battles. Oh, yes, yeah, so you can have one more people in the battle. Well, yeah, just like it's only single player, but there was like three different maps where you could just pick XL battle, and it's essentially like big team battle where all of a sudden there's like three times the amount of AI opponents, and it was only available on the PC version because like the, the better computing power, right? But I was like, wait, why is this a thing I've never heard of? That sounds fucking great because. The one biggest problem I ever had with those Battlefront games was like, it does feel a bit barren playing them now. Yeah, it's not like you play like, uh, what, Mercenaries mode, whereas in Evil, they always have the PC exclusive, like, No Mercy mode, where they just add more. That was in, like, the zombies. the remaster version, yeah. Add more zombies. Uh, but my favourite just... is, like, Baldur's Gate on PC, you've got a mod that, like, you can play, like, 16 members of party at once. You can just roll oh, the entire wow. squad. Fucking hell. And yeah, I was just like, how is this something I've never heard of? Like, Battlefront 2, but with actually a decent amount of enemies on screen? Direct intervention is necessary. You get them all. Pew pew! I love that little pew pew going on. Oh god. I'm gonna die. Oh, yeah. I pressed oh, that god. power and went, that was a bad decision. My, my screen. My screen is red. Apologies. Not burp there. You got a shotgun in the face. It was amazing. I just went, I shouldn't have done that power. And I stood up and just... Bleh. Oh, spend squad points. Uh, yes, we can give Kasumi a better overload. Cool. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's like I get that the game gave you those prompts. Especially since um, there was famously, uh, it might have been IGN, I can't remember which reviewer it was, that played through nearly all of Mass Effect 1 before realising you'd power up your character. Uh, it was Dean Takahashi, he's like the guy who... Oh, the, the Cuphead dude. Yeah. It was That's, that guy. That, it's wrote... funny because that, I remember when like people defended him quote unquote during the Cuphead thing of like yeah he was stupid but he wasn't the guy like sent to play the game he was just there for like filming and they asked him to play the demo and then that you know all happened but yeah, that in my head means that essentially <laughs> the Mass Effect happened and maybe other things and then they were just like you're not allowed to play the games anymore <laughs> that, that can't be your job anymore I'll never stop finding it funny because like, his defense was always like, I'm a tech journalist. Mm -hmm. It's like, surely you've held a video game controller <laughs> reviewing technology. Like, he legitimately played Cuphead as if he'd never held a controller. Yes, like, as if he'd never seen tech. like a video game control uh, controller or tutorial before. Well, you've been like a video, you've been a, vi like, a video game and technology reporter for. 10 years, and also used to review video games. Yeah. Like Mass <laughs> And the thing is, like, I get it when it's like, look, Cuphead was not my assignment. It wasn't my thing. That was not what I was there to do. And they just asked me to play, and I got a bit blindsided. It's, okay, yeah, fair enough. But also, like, do, do you know what? video games are and why we did you used to review video games that's the problem was like that it's really hard like on one hand you do want to feel bad because you don't criticizing games journalists always puts you in like a really bad company and also just yeah the idea that like he got he, he did get a bit blindsided he wasn't intending to play cuphead that isn't what he was there to do it's like there were like 30 people around watching him i can guess that you know 
nerves are set in or what have you. But still, when you used to be a video game reviewer and you put in that kind of performance of like acting, like not acting, but like not being able to just press two buttons in like consecutive order when it's yep. written on screen to do so. I'm pretty like I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of his reviews where he just doesn't understand basic mechanics. Well, last thing is like, how did you play through? Because like, so I think he played through Mass Effect into like the final mission or something. The Saren fight, to... yeah. His review said the Saren fight is impossible because he kills you in one hit. And then he, he just like yeah, they put a little date out, then he'd never once upgraded any one of his characters. Oh, it what it made it to review. Yeah. Oh, I thought it just like he, in the review he said like. Oh, I didn't realise until X point. Oh, that's even I think, worse. I think he made it to review, yeah. Oh, I, I think he might have been the guy, it was one of his colleagues as well, who reviewed um, a football manager game, and the chief complaint was that you can't see the football. Oh, yeah, like, why would you want to play this game? It just gives you the numbers and the manager stuff. It's yeah. almost like it's a manager simulator. It says it on the front of the box, doesn't it? It does a little bit. Oh, I still remember like, the, the controversy when Football Manager stopped putting Football Manager Man on the front. Wait, what? Remember football? There was basically, every Football Manager game had the guy in a suit with no head. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And then one of them, they just didn't put him on the front. They were like, the like, Football Manager's still like, <laughs> where is Football Manager Man? Because that was like the name he like, got given by fans. Uh... He's just in the suit with his head cut off. Yeah. It's like, what happens to football manager, man? What happened to the headless man in a suit? Who just plays football? He doesn't even play football, Carly, man. He just football. Oh, what? Uh, I, that will never stop being funny, that one. Because <laughs> I get it. It's like, oh, he's not a, he's not a game reviewer. But he's seen a video game, right? While reviewing them. Mm -hmm. Like, he's held a PlayStation controller, right? Like, this guy's got reviews of, like, the fucking, like, all the way back to, like, the PS1. That's the thing, he's got a byline with reviews on it, which means he has played games previously. And that Cuphead tutorial was nothing. Even if you've never played like a platformer or anything of that genre type, like, it just asked him to jump and press Y or whatever it, it legitimately was. Look, yeah, it legitimately looks like your hand, it's like you and your hand, like the controls to your mum or something. Mm -hmm. I like, it looks like a person that's never played a video game. What are they doing? I, I do have sympathies for that situation, but like, yeah, it's it's crazy. But I think that's just what made it funny. It's like, it's, because I, as soon as I heard all the excuses, like, I get that, but why, it, it doesn't make any sense how you're this bad. It's, like, it's you're written on the screen of what to do, yeah. Oh, a human reaper. A human reaper. What a sizzle. I love how much the 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 uh, how quickly the subtitles just spoiled that before the camera even made it close. Oh, it's great! I love like subtitle spoilers. It it was a good solid five seconds before the Reaper appeared anywhere near the screen, and he just appears in the subtitles like Human Reaper. It's like oh, great, thanks, Kate. Yeah. Oh, and shadow guard. Yeah, just go Google like uh, review a car play Cuphead. Mm -hmm. Watch and just watch it, and it's it's legitimately one of the most infuriating. And I I do think that it was framed really poorly by the internet of like, that's oh the, this that's dude got yeah. sent to go play Cuphead and couldn't figure out it in the preview. It's like that guy that wasn't that guy's job at the time, but like also yeah, what the fuck? Why was this person ever allowed to review video games? And I think that's the issue, as well. like you said, making fun of it lumps you in with the kind of people like, oh, games journalists don't have proper jobs. It's like, yeah, yeah it's exactly. tough. It's, it's the fine line to walk because it's just objectively very funny. It's the same time, like, you know, the exact same reason that but behind the scenes on, you know, a conversation that Carl and I had of like, oh, we, we made a video prior to Madam Webb's release. Should we make another one now that it's come out and been like a massive flop and we can just make fun of the movie? It's like, but then that makes us seem like we are in the crowd that are dunking on it for the wrong reasons. And yeah. maybe I just don't, I, maybe I just want to avoid that stress and that conversation. I just don't want to be even like, you know, 
tangentially adjacent to this. It's like we had it for years with Fact Fiend of, hey, you might know nerdy white guys mm -hmm. making content about comic books and movies. The amount of people who would like just assume that because of that, I am racist was mm -hmm. very annoying. Yeah, and like the amount of people that would just assume the moment we made fun of Madam Web or said that like we thought that the Marvels was okay and not particularly great. Like, the moment you start having those conversations online, the moment you lump yourself in with those, like, people that are literally just dunking on Brie Larson because she's a woman. Or That's hating weird, Madam like... Web because, like, again, women are in it. It's like the weird, like, culture war people, isn't it? Yeah, and it's I don't really want to just even accidentally put myself in that same grouping of just weird white men complaining about women-led movies online on YouTube because you just immediately get pigeonholed and that becomes your audience, right? Yeah, and especially considering that you've got a beard and I've got long hair. Mm. It's a bad look, bad times. I like how you're the one with long hair out of us too, apparently. I guess so. I've got, I've got the <laughs> short track here. I always forget. Yeah. It's a cool thing, though. It's a cool robot. But yeah, like... Um... The collector process tens of thousands of humans, significantly more than will be required to complete the Reaper. So it may be that they're acquiring multiple, like enough for multiple Reapers, maybe? How many more humans Just the idea is, well, they've got more than they need. It's like, don't you get like screws left over after like an IKEA project? No, oh, no, they'd need so many more. Okay, sorry, I missed that. Um, or oh, we misread it. Um, is it alive? So it's an embryo. It's it's beginning its stages of so life. It's not alive yet. We can still stop it from being created. The process can be stopped, but it is unclear exactly how much it has developed. I cannot, for example, tell you if it has awareness. Oh man, our friend is not having a good time playing Final Fantasy because he's like probably the most frustrating part of the entire game. No, oh, no. And it's like it's basically just bad moment after bad moment after bad moment. And he's just done like the shittiest like triple combat challenge, and now it's like now you follow these very slow guy in rows for ten minutes. I think they're a lot further. Oh, that's still a thing that's happening. What following the guys in the robes? I'm on like the Mount Corel bit. I don't mate, like. I'm mate. so fed up with the dudes in the robes. Is it just the entire game is dudes in robes? Mate, you've got to follow them to the end of the game. Yeah. Because I know following... that that's like part of Final Fantasy VII as well, right? Is like the dudes in robes. No, no. I thought I thought they existed in Final Fantasy VII. Not as much. They're not. Like, no, they're, they're not as yet. prominent. But obviously, yeah. Final Fantasy VII remake trilogy is like it's taking what a thirty-hour game and putting it into presumably. I mean, so far it's been what one hundred and fifty hours worth of game, and there's another third of the game to be told. Yeah. So it's very, it's very dragged out, but they were in the original game, weren't they? Yeah, like you have like the, the people with Mako poisoning. Mm -hmm. but yeah, they, yeah. It's, and just the fact, like, our friends got to be, it's like, I've just told them, like, yeah, you follow them for the rest of the game. The entire rest of the game is following these. It's like, mm -hmm. why? Why? Yeah, and we don't want to get too deep into spoilers or anything for Rebirth, but, like, yeah, like, just, I've heard, not just from you two, but, like, the the chatter online is just that game has some incredibly low lows towards the end. There is some high highs and some low fucking lows. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Carl, human reapers. Why does it look human? It why does it look human? human? It's the least efficient form. Okay, so it's based upon reapers are humans because it. Why do they hmm. need humans at all? Okay, so they're not fully robotic. But it seems probable that the Reapers absorb the essence of a species, utilizing it in the reproduction process. Oh, something's leaking through on your end, Carl, on your mic. Oh, it might be a place for Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I could just hear someone else talking in my ear. I was like, this is neither the game or Carl. Um, what do the collectors gain by turning humans into this 
But hell yeah, so I just, I'm loving that. I'm just, we're getting we're getting, getting messages all like day from him because I must have just, like got from work and played it. Mm -hmm. And it's like every ten minutes, we get another message like, "Are they taking the fucking piss?" Yeah. And just, that was my exact experience of like, why am I spending an hour following guys in robes? Can I not just know that they were there? So. The collectors are constructing this reaper, but like other species in the past have collect like have created other reapers. But it just so happens that the, the collectors are using the humans to make this one. The collectors are just Protheans. Why would they help mm -hmm. the reapers? The reapers subdued the Protheans long ago. Man, the story of Master Effect gets so weird after a little bit. It's great. Mm. I love how weird they get with it. Okay, so they were initially trying to make a Prothean Reaper, but when that didn't work, they turned them into the Collectors instead over time. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, that's interesting, but like, what does that mean about the initial Reapers? Were they made by a someone initially based on another race? Like, what's mm -hmm. the weird squid-shaped beings that the Reapers are based off, is that based off another set of also collected and melted down races to make the initial Reapers? Was it... Yeah. Was it similar to the Collectors collecting a different race, or was it maybe that there was a race that created them and sacrificed themselves on purpose to like essentially become Reapers? Yeah, we, we, I think mean, you get to that in a little bit, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's too big for our guns. But he's like kind of like a cool bit of the mystery here of like, wait a minute, what the fuck? Yeah. Why does this reaper look human? It's like, wait, but the reapers we saw previously look like weird aliens. Like, they look like the uh, giant squid robot things. And it's like, okay, but what were the giant squid robot things that look like the other reapers then? And are they the first reapers or are they just other reapers? Super interesting. That's why I... it is. Yeah, it's a great hint as well of like what the fuck is it thing. It's why like so much of Mass Effect is just so cool of like, okay, but discovering that there is a human shaped Reaper that just opens up a fucking rabbit hole. Yep. Oh yeah, like Carl and I are speaking as is like. Oh, uh, I, like, you know, I don't remember the details, but, like, you know, we're trying to do that thing of, like, the non-spoilery, like, oh, I wonder where this could lead, kind of. It's a rare skill that like, very few people on the internet possess. Nobody on the internet seems to possess the skill to be a not spoil <laughs> I, was, I was telling Carl earlier today of, like, I had not, I had watched season one of Invincible, and we had um, done the... Uh, recording for the Battle Beast Wikis video. But on my own personal YouTube, I had never interacted with any Invincible content. So and like, just clicking I, and making a thumbnail, presumably, right? No, no, but that was on the Wiki Weekends channel, not my own personal one. No, but you know... Where, you like, I it. watch YouTube. Yeah. And I went onto my YouTube homepage the other day, and I literally got an Invincible spoiler. On the thumbnail, not even in the video. I got an invincible spoiler on a thumbnail when I've never interacted with, like... It was just a random person that I subscribed to that I haven't watched in, like, two years that makes comic book content. They just felt the need to spoil something in Invincible on the thumbnail. Day one. Yeah. I was like... I was like, I haven't even done anything to potentially ask for this thing to happen. It's like when you mentioned, like, oh, well, I've been looking at, like, Devil May Cry trailers, so, of course, I got a Devil May Cry, like, final boss spoiler day one. It's like, I guess I can see, like, the link between why YouTube might try and do that. Well, yeah, you were interested in this. You were interested in watching the trailers. Do you not want to see the end of the game? The game? <laughs> it's like, no, I don't, but I see why. Oh, new DMC5 popular content has launched on YouTube. Do you want to see it? They didn't even, like, show any interest to the algorithm, and it's like, hey, do you want spoilers, though? Like, God damn it. I think, yeah, it's what I said to you, isn't it, of just, um, we are the only people on YouTube who have the restraint not to do this. Like, look at the difference between the video we made and the video they made. Mm -hmm. Like, our video, we've got, like... Like, we like, do our best to, uh, as long as it's not, like, you know, 20 years old, we do our best to, like, 
give at least a quick spoiler warning. Maybe if, it, if it's yeah. more than six months old, it's probably not that long a warning. Which is like the video we did on Battle Beast. Mm -hmm. Like the the air we went to to not spoil it and, and to tell other like, people to not spoil it. it. And then like yeah, without asking, I just like get immediately spoiled day one. And I'm like, did you really have to put it in the thumbnail though? Because you at least yeah. not just spoiled it for the people that fucking clicked on the video that were interested. Yeah, I also got um spoiled on one piece, and I don't think it was a thumbnail. Um, I think it was just like doing a quick Google of like, oh, One Piece related gifts to buy for oh, Jenna yeah. for like her birthday one year. And it was like, do you want manga spoilers? Here you go. Okay, sure. And then I did also see manga spoilers in the thumbnail, but it was after I'd already been spoiled. But yeah, I did also see them. So I guess I would have been spoiled regardless by the thumbnails. Right. It's actually kind of amazing, right? Mm -hmm. like, at very least, just, you know, let people click on the video so they can hear, like, spoiler warning and click off. But no, people just can't fucking help themselves. Well, no, because they get clicks. They do, and it's insane to me because every time I see a channel do that, do you know what the first thing I do is? You not recommend this channel again. Never recommend this channel ever again. Unsubscribe. I said, like, the story I like and to tell. It's is, weird is that, like, the response from most people is, oh, I, I guess I'll click on that and reward that behavior. But, yeah, go on. Sorry. Got you on, the story sorry. I tell is, um, back in my writing days, as someone who I knew, follow, like, work with, like, um, uh, on a couple of projects, d d d comic books. Love comic books. Mm -hmm. uh, got to the point where they were, they created a quite successful series. I won't say the name of it, but, like, they... It, Comic book related and it got quite popular. And that mm -hmm. resulted in them being invited to premieres. And I remember they got invited to the Captain Marvel premiere and just spoiled the ending. Uh, just on, on Twitter, day one, just like posting spoilers about the ending. It's like, how the fuck can you be a fan of this medium and do that? Mm -hmm. Just immediately unfollowed them. It's thing. We are holding it's like, how can you be like a, a, a fan of this genre? Head to the Normandy. And then Don't not think about, about that. Like, oh, I love comic books. I'm going to spoil it. And then we're getting like back to like, you know early premieres and spoiling it. Is that like, yeah. how are you going to get invited to more of these? Mm -hmm. They just can't help themselves. They can't now. Fuck you, got mine. Shepherd, you've done the impossible. Fuck you, Mister Sinister. Just I've had enough. This base is 10 minutes from extinction. You've done the impossible. It's like you can suck my balls. How about that? I'm looking at the schematics ED uploaded. A timed radiation pulse would kill the remaining collectors, but leave the machinery and technology intact. This is our chance, Shepard. They were building a Reaper. That Once again, framework could save us. just Mr. Sinister himself being like, hey, what about, though, if you just gave Cerberus all this tech? That would be really handy for Cerberus. You know, like, it's just something like, why would I give Cerberus this? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I think one of my, like, fucking favourite ones, I had to just respect the bit. I've, like, I've told the story a couple of times before on content, but, like, in our school, the day that, uh, whatever book it was, it might have been Half-Blood Prince, but... The one where Dumbledore dies, right? Yeah. And sorry, spoilers for like my Harry Potter. Fuck off if you not. Yeah. If you care, you should have seen it already. But Dumbledore dies, right? And it's like walking to school that day, the day the book released, and basically like nearly every single door. Bear in mind, this was probably hundreds or thousands. I've just. Pages of A4 paper printed off that just said Snape killed Dumbledore and just stuck to every fucking door in the entire school pretty much. And just you just walked into school and just everywhere there was just a piece of paper that was just big bold like a Snape kills Dumbledore. You've got like you said, you've got to respect. That. I kinda have to respect that level of just 
fuck you. We're going to get in to school early, print off all these pages of, like, the spoiler, the day one. It just, like, it does take my balls to do that. And, like, it actually takes time and investment. They do, They just skip to the end of the book, right? They just read the of last course, page, yeah. surely. They just must have read, like, let's go through the last couple of pages and just read the spoiler. And, like, the dedication to buy the book, get to school before everyone, print out the spoiler, go around the whole school and start printing out and sticking it up everywhere. I was like, this took actual planning and time. <laughs> like, I, I've never been less mad at being spoiled by something. And the one that I always bring up, because it's still the funniest fucking one, is where Brad, like, the day before Endgame came out, played some, <laughs> played some Rocket League. A guy came in with the name, Nat and Tony Die, scored an own goal and quit. And he's just like, that is fucking incredible. That's the uh... real bad way that it's the level of effort they went to. Mm-hmm. It's more as well the detail of them scoring an own goal. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, then it flashes up on the screen in like giant letters of like Nat and Tony die scored an own goal. Like, I was just fucking creasing at that one. Of, like, of all things, like, I'm just gonna stay off all social media. I'm just gonna go play Rocket League tonight and not not look at anything before I go watch the movie. And Rocket League spoilers came and hit you. It's great. Like, there's no spoilers <laughs> like the more unexpected than Rocket League spoilers. Again, like, you've got to be mad and upset, but you've got to respect that fucking level of hustle. It's not, you can't really be mad because no. it's so fucking mean. <laughs> like, it's such a specific oh. dick move. So, yeah, uh, Mr. Sinister himself is like, yeah, give us that tech, bro. Give us that tech. Uh, you've done nothing to earn my trust the entire game, fuck you. How the fuck would you use this? It's not exactly portable. What are you suggesting? Our best chance against the Reapers is to turn their own resources against them. They were working directly with the Collectors. Who knows what information is buried there? This base I've been doing a pretty good job so far. <laughs> How the fuck can I ever trust you? Your name is literally the elusive man. You're completely ruthless. The next thing I know, you'll be wanting to grow your own Reaper. My goal is to save humanity from the Reaper. I do kind of love the idea, though, of just like, you know what? I'm going to trust the man. <laughs> I'm trust the <laughs> If we keep this base intact and use its knowledge to thwart the Reaper, imagine the lives that will be lost if we don't. Yes, we can certainly trust Cerberus, who's like, the only thing we ever hear about is that they're all fucking evil. He is an elusive hoe. No matter what kind of technology we might find, it's not worth it. Shepard. You died fighting for what you believed. I brought you back so you could keep fighting. Some would say what we did to you was going too far, but look what you've accomplished. I didn't discard you because I knew your value. Don't be so quick to discard this facility. Think of the potential. It's so funny. But that's the thing, right? Is like, you know, chat, you can influence this, but right now we all renegade, and like, I, uh, I'm very unfamiliar, I think, with the Mass Effect 3 payoffs of doing the renegade route i think they just give you like some resources right at the start yeah it's like right yeah so what what are you waning here carl i fuck him and never i never give him it you never so gave him it. Single, the renegade option is always like no fuck you delete it mm, the true. real the real renegade option will be to take it and sell it yeah <laughs> Okay, well, like, you know, I guess uh, that's that shift swiftly over to Paragon. Everyone just is like, no, no, let's no not do this. Fight and win without it. I won't let fear yeah. compromise who I am. Shepard, think about what's at stake. Sorry, about mind. everything Cerberus but... has done for you. You. Carl didn't want to do it. Ch chat seemingly didn't want to do it. It's like, yeah. No one ever wants to see one of the elusive man. I'll say I don't want to work with him either. But, like, there is that other side of things. of like, I don't think I ever really sided with him, so it would have, like, you know, done that thing of, like, making for an interesting playthrough in my eyes. of like, I don't think I've seen that before. They give you a pre-order bonus. Probably just that kind of thing, yeah. Of like, here's plus 10% to your initial, like, points. The Reaper Human Lava. 
this fucking like terminate looking piece of shit. Can we just fire black holes at it? It'd work. Can do. Got trouble. Oh god, that collector drone. Coming in hot. No shields. You're right. Yes. Admittedly, this does look a bit like just some kind of Destiny raid boss or something. It's a cool visual. It's just a, it's a cool visual, yeah. Very bad fight boss fight. Just fight the Terminator. Mm -hmm. Just shoot the glowing orange eyes. The Zelda boss. Don't worry. We got this. That's, a, that's I think, one of the, the most interesting things is Mass Effect 3 almost the entire game is like Let's focus less on the RPG and more on the combat. And the, the most interesting thing is that they realize that they don't need a final boss. Yep. They don't need a big bombastic final boss fight, and that's the most interesting lesson they learn, I think. They almost learned in Mass Effect 1 of like the Saren fight. The number one complaint about the Saren fight is even if you convince him to like, kill himself, he's still mm -hmm. got fight him. Yeah, because you can, like, as we mentioned before, you can convince Saren to top themselves, but at the same time, then just the Reaper indoctrination side of Saren takes over and you have to fight him anyway. Oh, this was such an interesting idea, but then you fucked it. They almost, they almost figured it out. They almost had it. Marauder God, this thing moves around way too quickly. Nothing can beat Marauder Shields. Nobody will ever defeat Marauder Shields. I mean, best best final boss for a oh, like an RPG like this, right? A narrative based That's RPG. Spotted. Best final fight. Random enemy number three. Just Mr. Marauder Shields himself. It, it, it thing is though, it's kind of funny. You know, I, I almost respect it in a way of the final boss you fight. You're just a random guy. I, I love it. I absolutely like unironically love it because it shows that they learn that. The story is the interesting part and not the boss fight. The entire time we've been playing through Mass Effect 1 and 2, it's just why do you keep forcing us into these weird combat scenarios? Yeah. Like this mission, for example, it would have been fun if it was just okay, do that mini combat account where you shoot the four things. This part of the boss fight didn't need to happen. Cool, you took down the weird Reaper human thing. Do you want to take the technology or not? Okay, cool. Move out. R.I.P. Zaid. Like, you should just throw Zaid caught there. <laughs> yeah, and just the fact that, yeah, he just didn't learn that lesson at all, and it just instead decided, you know what we really need right now is a big bombastic boss fight that's really bad. It makes no sense. Yep. Just super awkward boss fight that is horrible to play against. Up ahead. Going silent. <laughs> this should soften them up. Yeah, that is that black hole gun is not gonna work. Oh shit. Unity heal us up. This is what you face. Oh shit. Oh my god. Please, please stop. Like both the Harbinger like attacked at just the wrong time then. So the the Reaper human lava just needs it needs one last black hole. So the fact it takes this long to do as well. Mm -hmm. God damn! Oh, the black hole just doesn't do it. 
you think hitting something in the eye with a black hole would do damage? Do you think it hurt in some kind of way? You think just the fact, like just the spray, do it in a black hole with your eyeball? <laughs> There we go. What a fun boss fight that was, everyone. Didn't you all feel the hype? Not really, no. We did That's it. That's a shame as well. But yeah. What, what, you what, know just as a well, wet like, fart to end Mass Effect 2. Or, and I was just like... Yeah, you kind of just took down this really bad boss fight. Like that's the, you know they put this in because like we need to have a big bombastic ending. It's and like, again, no, the audio not. just glitches and we get no proper audio. It's like, thanks, Mass Effect. Yeah, like what did what did that boss fight add? What did it teach us? What did it? Doing the end, nothing. No. So just just seeing it is cool enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Just take it down, make the cool narrative decision, walk away. Do you copy, Commander? Come on, Shepard. Don't leave me hanging. Do you copy? I'm here, Joker. Did the ground team make it? That's a that's a weird way of wording it. All survivors are on board. Well, they say that because they don't want to like record the different lines, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. But it's like, but who are it, like that? That implies that not everyone made it, right? Well, not everyone did. I think it's just they needed to find a way to word it so you didn't get in trouble. That should weigh more more than planet, more than planet Earth. But that's the thing. It's like oh, it's. It's a little, like, portable singularity. Like, you no, know, that would just start ripping up whatever planet it's shot at, right? So, yeah, do you understand how physics works? <laughs> it's like, that would just start accumulating mass infinitely, immediately, right? As far yeah. as I'm aware. It's always fun when there's just, like, something introduced in a universe and just, like, the people who put it in don't understand what that actually means. It's fine in, like, Ratchet and Clank when you get a black hole gun. Yeah, who gives a fucking Ratchet, right? But in a sensibly realistic universe, especially a sci-fi universe. One, though, where they thought about, like, shooting tiny shrapnels of metal at light, near light speed to make effective bullets and stuff, and they go to that level of detail into the lore of, like, the how the Mass Effect pistols work, and then they're like, fuck it, you can shoot singularities at people. Oh no, the Harbinger's just like, no! But like, I never expected this. We will find another way. I'll be back. Releasing control. The thing oh, is that. Sorry, I'm pretty sure he said, I will be back. The idea as well, I think, releasing control. The implication being that, yeah, that was not. Like, even the leader of that collectorship was not the actual harbinger it was being controlled by another collector somewhere else that was like the don of the dons it's pretty cool right i don't imagine if they did bring zaid's body back that like you know i think you would bring that to like the elusive man and go oh you brought shepherd back can you do anything with this like no we could but it, it... A oh, bit, Harbinger right? is a Reaper. Got it right. Okay. I thought Harbinger was the name of, like, the head of the collectors or something. But it is just a Reaper. Cool. Shepherd, you're making a habit of I'm misremembering things. Right? Money. I mean, yeah. Like, I guess there is some somehow a process that you could do that, but I don't know if the game goes into details or is just like, here's a fucking cool black hole gun. Yeah, we have the technology, we just would rather not spend the money on him. I kind of, I think I respect it. It's like, yeah. we have the 
fucking. We just don't want to spend. Just who the fuck is that? He was costing us money. Do you know how much money we had to pay to just have him sit on the Normandy doing nothing? Maybe he was actively on the job 24 7. And you never took him into fights. But yeah, we paid for like, the greatest like mercenary. It's like the one job you asked him to do. He, he fucking, fucking failed. died. Too many lives were lost. Which is actually kind of amazing how I think about it. Like, yeah, the one thing you asked him to do, he fucking failed immediately. <laughs> That's kind of amazing how I think about it. Yeah. Oh, look, he's playing from a blue one. Do you think at some point that'll change colour? Or just Cerberus. They don't have to pay him, but the problem with paying is family, right? It's like, that's probably the agreement. That's how mercenaries normally work, right? But like, I'm pretty sure he mentions like having a daughter or something. And it's just like, yeah, I imagine that Zayed probably just has all that money funneling into like supporting his family or whatever. That's the usual mercenary stock. Like his mic from Breaking Bad. Mm hmm. Exactly, yeah. You're on my team now. We're Paragon Shepherd now. I'm not looking for your approval. Harbinger's coming and he won't be alone. Humanity needs a leader who's looking out for. His life's fine. We took down Sovereign, right? Nice. No, All he's dead. Don't turn your back on me, Shepherd. I made you. I brought you back from the dead. Joker, lose this channel. Fuck you. You know how long that you've been holding that over my head? Yeah, you, you brought me back from the dead, but you've used that line one too many times. But you get to do that once per day. Yeah. <laughs> Never read the fine print. Just, just launch some money into the Omega 4 relay. Launch some credits in there and that, that's the payment. That works, right? It's fine. Oh no. Oh no, Zaid. Just yeah. the one corpse. The, the one, one lone Zaid corpse. The thing is, I think you lose everyone. Like, this room should be like stacked. It's like when mm -hmm. your house is carrying full of cheese. Oh, yeah. It's overflow. It should be overflowing with coffins. When I drop 6,000 T Rex toys in Fallout in my room. Isn't Zaid as well the one who shot a guy in the back as he was running away? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you should have, like, the, um, the cocktail dressed on for this bit. <laughs> so, come on, fellas. So, this romance guy, Ben Hall, let us down, Carl. And there it is. Like, the Mass Effect 3 T's of... Yeah, you think Harbinger's on his way? Just, just wait. Just you wait, because there's... There's more than one. Thing is though, at least two on the way. What's a better like setup for like a sequel in the Xbox 360 era? That or like the Halo 3 one? The Halo 3 one's so fucking good. What of the Halo 3 like call me when you uh, need me? Yeah. Wake you when wake wake me when you need me, is it? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, but if you if you play the legendary version, like you see like someone back, you see a ship just pop into the frame for like one second, like mm -hmm. oh, and then, he, then we got Halo 4. And also the um, the really cool, like, little nod in Halo Reach as well. I think it might also only be the legendary ending, but um, when you, like, jump on or see the ship, like, flying away and making it, it's, like, got the Master Chief frozen for, Mass uh, for, Mass Effect, for Halo 1 going to the yes. Pillar of Autumn. I like that. Of just you see yeah, in the ship the the frozen like cryo master chief getting escorted away. The thing is, at some point we do need to play Halo Reach. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do want to play Halo Reach again to see if it's as good as I remember it, or is it like is it really aged poorly? I yes. remember Emil. I remember Emil being really fucking edgy. Oh, the guy who scrapes a skull into his visor. Why would you think that? That's only in Legendary. I thought it was, yeah. 
but I always like the idea of like finish it on legendary and you'll get just like that extra little bit. I always like that about the, like the Halo series as well because it's like the legendary like playthroughs were difficult but not impossible, mm -hmm. and they give you like the little bit extra lore. I think it's like Mass I think Halo Four is the one if you complete it on legendary, mm -hmm. you see Master in space, but only for a little bit. Yeah, and that and is um, right. that's an option for us to play at some point when it's the the case of like, well, we're gonna do random games on Monday until we hit the sub goal for Mass Effect Three. I'd prefer to not commit to a game with any kind of narrative or anything. Just stuff that's drop in, drop out, because what if we hit the sub goal halfway through playing Halo Reach? Uh, that means I've either got to abandon that playthrough, or then people who have paid for the sub goal of hitting Mass Effect 3, then they have to wait. That is very true. And so that's why I like to just be like, look, we won't play Mass Effect 3 until we hit that sub goal. Um, that is how it works, but I don't want to commit to like a narrative game or anything like that. And just that means one of two things have to like get pushed back. But yeah, I would be down for like a Halo Reach co op playthrough at some point. Is it as good as I remember, or is it real cringe? Hmm. I feel like I feel like it might be real cringe. Same with like. Um... The other one, ODST. Yeah, so ODST. I'd, I bet that I'd, I'd be down for doing a co-op run of that again at some point. Like it really like felt cool and different to me when I played through it at the time. It's true. We might do some Pokemon Dream. We might do like just a community night um, of like a you know multiplayer game or something. Uh, I think I'd rather like try and get people involved in some kind of way than just play like money or something like I'd rather do something where, you know, we can have a bit more interaction with chat than just like playing a random game. Yeah. We also uh, play through money as well. Remember? We did a let's play of it, right? Yeah, we did like fishing Fridays. We didn't the, uh... we didn't do like a playthrough of it, but yeah, we did do a let's play at some point of money here. Oh, we played it. So, we did good. But yeah, um, you know, it's one of those things of like, yeah, it will be nice to, to come back to Mass Effect 3. And it like, you know, we will hit that sub goal at some point, but um, it, it's also just like, if we don't hit that sub goal soon, it's nice to just take a little bit of a break. Like, you know, take in what Mass Effect 2 was. Hope to God that we get something after this where we can romance someone. Yeah, like, please. Maybe like, if we, like, if no, we get like... an imperfect run and a no-nut run at the same time, that's just going to be disappointing. I feel like, you know, the Legendary Edition probably puts that in. But it does say, like, on the, um, the IGN guide specifically for Mass Effect 2 romance is, like, after the suicide mission is done, you can romance people this way. So, like, we've just got... You know, I, I like to just have a quick little uh, chat over the, the credits and stuff. But when the credits are done, we can see, right, of just who or what happens. And, like, is there any option to do anything afterwards? Or is it just get some romance scenes in? Or, like, what does the game actually do when it hits endpoint? Just to, to me, in my brain, it was just, oh, you hit credits and that's it. It's just end. Oh, but yeah. yeah. I like Fishing Fridays as an idea. Mm -hmm. Just the side channel just died on its ass. We all yeah. got too busy. Mm -hmm. We all just kind of <clears throat> lost interest in in doing it and it didn't have much focus and it wasn't in many views and we all just got a little bit disheartened and stuff and yeah just very very clear and one of the big reasons why we refocused our efforts and like started shrinking like the whole operation back down was partly because of that of like we just spread ourselves way too thin 
I do feel that Fishing Fridays could definitely be a thing. You could bring Fishing Fridays back. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. That's the thing, I don't necessarily think all the ideas were bad, and I'm proud of, like, some of the ideas that I had for that that channel and even might want to revisit them one day, but just again, I don't want to reach a point where I'm just feeling stressed and spread out and, like, oh, spread too thin again. I like I'm having so much more of a just nice time just making wiki weekends and streaming nowadays. I just oh, feel yeah. like, you know, relieved in whatever, like, kind of mental capacity kind of way. Is that I can just focus on trying to do what I want to do and have fun with it. Which, you know, is, is nice, but, you know, it's uh, one of those things of, like, hopefully the the viewerships and stuff will go up and things will increase over time to make it actually profitable to be doing that. But Soon, Lucas. Soon. 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 As we always say, like, if not when. No, all the way around. When, not if. Uh, went very pessimistic then for a second by accident. Yes. When, not faith. if. But yeah. Like, Carl, do you fancy just uh, come into like, doing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on hard mode? No. No, for <laughs> that. I only stole it. Yeah. I don't blame you. I literally just uninstalled it the moment I found out that's what it wants me to do. Mm -hmm. And, it, like, last thing is, I um, I did end up doing it after a while and revisiting uh, Rebirth, but, like, a uh, remake. But, like, that game did not respect your time. The Bahamut not thing far. was bullshit and was so overpowered compared to where you would be at Endgame. Like I just start to grind the fuck out of stuff. That's it. When you boot up hard mode, everything just gets auto set to be uh, level seventy. Mm -hmm. So you know, twenty levels above the max level, there's nowhere to grind because every enemy is twenty levels above you. So the only thing you do is beat your head against the wall. Yeah. Uh... And like I said, I watched like a playthrough of someone doing like the rebirth thing. Like, oh, is this like actually like doable? It's like yeah, it took an hour. Yeah, yeah. Just like, I, I don't want to spend an hour. So we're going to continue this save file rather than import. The fish are alive! The fish are alive, yeah, the fish everyone! The fish are safe. Our, our so is the galaxy. It. So I guess we can save. Then go and, like, you know, have a word with Morinth. And then the maybe we can like reload and then hope that we still have the option to go talk to Thane and Romance him properly. We should be able to. So we want to get that cutscene. Otherwise, just play it on YouTube. You're fine. Well, it's more just as well like um, there the is a reaction oh, yeah. in on in Mass Effect Three when we get to when we get to play that Mass Effect 3 like Thane exists in that game even if he's not a squad member and it means that we will get to like continue that like line through I think you did the right thing by like him being a previous lover it was an abomination you've been through a lot I'm always fine Shepard I learned hundreds of years ago to look out for myself how do you handle such a sound? I mean, we've been through this conversation like four times. I'm just going to get to the bit. Like, she died because I just touched my penis. Mm, well, I mean, the, neither have a penis right now. I want to give you that, Shepard. Just touch it. I want you to the end. Nerve in your oh, here we go. I love that. Do you yeah. think I'm an idiot? Like, what about your condition of like murdering me when we sleep together? The best is, well, you can just not care. That's what I love about the fact that just Shepard can be like. You can acknowledge it and still do it. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, okay. You, you've survived plenty. There's no one like you, Shepard. Like you just saved the universe. You just killed the Reaper. Like I think, no, you killed the Reaper the first time after it's thought to be impossible, and you just killed another one. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those of like, don't worry that I lie and manipulate people into sleeping with me so I can steal the life essence. You're different and special, honestly. You're the main character. There's, there's no. There's no, like, my game's going on here. Definitely not, even though that's exactly what I'm known for. 
So you're special and wonderful, and you'll definitely pull it off. You'll definitely, you'll bigger. be fine, Shepard, because you're the you're the chosen one that can sleep with me. Like he's actually low key kind of genius, isn't it? Because it plays into like you know it's meta in a way where it's using the your knowledge of storytelling. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing is like don't... Shepard to this point has literally survived things that other people wouldn't. So it makes sense for Morin to be like, well, yeah, let's use that. But the idea that he's using your own, it's like your knowledge of how video games function and work mm-hmm. is playing against you here. Yeah. Like, well, uh, you know, I'll be fine because we've got to still continue the game, right? Embrace eternity. And then he's like just legitimately hilarious that you can fall for it. Bye. <laughs> in fact, she doesn't even touch it's it. It's just instant. It's just instant, yeah. Like that like I can't believe Morin's learned the Sats to New Hardo and used it on this. <laughs> it's just like you know just what? Die 10, 000, You'll die, die 10, happy. Deaths. But Shepard, you will also fucking die. You're not that special. I'm sorry, Shepard. The thing is, I want to know how Morin got off the ship. What do you mean? I want to know how, after Morin did that, what was their plan? Mm-hmm, yeah. I thought, oh, I need I need to go, like, take a shuttle. It's a, we're not near any planets, we just need Shepard to tell us where to go next. Ah. Uh, yeah. Shepard's tired? Yeah, Shepard's sleeping at the moment. Just... Yeah, don't... Don't disturb her. She's just in my quarter sleeping. Just, she told me that she really wanted to go to Omega next. You had to make. But it's just so choice. funny how quick it is because you're expecting like a sex scene or something. It's like, no, she just immediately kills you. Yeah. Have a few minutes to. Tell you know that's like one punch man. Do you know like where one punch man punches someone? It's like the giant face. <laughs> Will you hear my confession, Siha? Last time we talked like this, you said you'd explain what Siha means. I need to explain myself to you first. When I married Erica, like it's I legitimately had amazing. Service to raise a family, but I had no other skills. Oh god, so that's so it. rough. Of like, when oh yeah, gone, when I found I love, um, the the Hanar let me not be an assassin I anymore, but I had no other jobs on my resume, so I went and just freelanced as an assassin anyway. Oh, it's the only thing. Oh, for fuck's sake! It's like it was the one the skill I had on my resume. What am I meant to do? I, I had zero job experience anywhere else. So you couldn't go like work in like a Hana place. Like, there must be something they, the Hana can't do that you can mm. help with. Like they've not got hands. Yeah, but their environment's very wet, Carl. Wear a suit. I guess you're lucky we came along when we did. It was an intervention by the gods. I would have died in that penthouse. I would have fulfilled my contract. If Nasana's guards caught me afterwards would have been a good death but someone else was pushing to reach the target forcing me to move faster oh that was like legitimately hilarious I had to mm-hmm. first. it's just, just like die. Oh God. just die 10,000 so death what? Do, 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 do. And it's like now we get to you know hopefully feel the warm embrace of Thane instead rather than just like don't worry Shepard you'll die happy what <laughs> can you imagine if Thane did it as well can you imagine if I like... Just say he's zoomed in on Thane's face. Is that what do you think happened to my previous wife? What? Oh, did you? Like, did you not know, Shepard, that my um, uh, my, my latest target would you? What? <laughs> the elusive man who <laughs> sends his regards. No, Zayi's this is what family. you get for destroying the collector base. No, be like Zaid's family sends their regards. <laughs> it's for Zaid. Oh. Uh... You're alive because I wounded your pride? Pride is the line between a professional and a thug. But I met another Siha. Oh, it's so she fucking funny. To meet even one. I kind of want that to happen now. Tell me what a Siha is. One of the warrior angels of the goddess Arashu. Fierce in wrath. A tenacious protector. I confess, I've come to... Oh, I'm a big fan as well when you talk to like, the aliens and, and you learn about their gods and stuff. Are very mm-hmm. Yeah, like he literally talks about like just different gods. Like, I can't replace oh, your wife. It's like, no, 
Fuck you, wife, she's dead. Thane, I'm here for you, I care for you. Never felt affection for another species. Something more than friendship. That's oh, a good shit. line. Steal that line. Use that line. I forgot that. Yeah, we have to go. To the memories. Oh, you have to go ask more. We have to go ask more than like where, where's the Thane condom. Also, as well, Thane. That is such a good line. I look forward to the memories. Mm -hmm. That is so smooth. Game. Facebook Morinth came back in for some more. <laughs> Morinth just opens the door. How about we make that two CRs? Do you need something? What? Wait, what just happened? Wait, what? I should go. As you will. Okay, I think it was just we were here, so we need to go talk to to Morden. I think he was like resetting your um uh, place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, don't worry, I won't kill either of you. You're both special, and just what? you and Thane fall for it at the same time. Received a new message at your private time. I think like, what I what, what shit are people got to be sending me right now? Unread messages from the elusive man. Uh, no, I want there to be an unread message from the Reapers. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for you, Shepherd. Okay, it's just from, like, other missions. I also like that as well. The loss of your crew is terrible. It's like, we lost one guy. <laughs> we lost one guy is the guy that you paid to be. It's yeah. like, wait, we, we lost someone? Who did we lose? Apparently there was a guy called Zaid Masani. Oh! Oh, yeah! I forgot we hired him. Collectors destroyed. Base in ruins. Extremely impressive. How do I get laid? Man will be displeased. Fortunately, not human myself. Not my problem. I want to talk about you. I don't. I want to talk about you. the sexual upgrades I can achieve to. Have you got a minute to talk? <laughs> get my bad get needs with them. My, my bad needs Men several bad. upgrades. Aware that mission is dangerous. Different species react differently to stress. Sexual activity normal as stress release. Still, recommend caution with Thane. Drell human liaisons complex. Thane complex as well. Please give me advice. Recommendation as a doctor: prolonged human to drell skin contact can cause yeah. small rash, itching. Oral contact may cause mild hallucinations. Also, forwarding advice book. Mild hallucinations. He's got an advice booklet and everything with diagrams. Zone overviews can supply oils or ointments to reduce discomfort. To be fair, you know this is how it should be. Mm -hmm. But hey, I'm th I'm thinking of like you know going to the next step in my relationship with this person. Like here's everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. And like, oh yeah, just can someone actually provide me sexual education? Well, did you know that like the penis gets erect? It's, I don't need to know like necessarily like that's helpful, but can you tell me like anything about you know STDs and birth protection and control and stuff? Uh, no, 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 we can't. Maybe go talk to a doctor about that. So you could be in America. Thank you, education. Oh, Thank you. It could be worse, like I said. It could be American. It could, it could be Britain where they played us, like, I think a member of, like, McFly talking over an AIDS awareness video. And it's like, yeah, uh, thanks. Oh, God. But, yeah, I do like that. Gave ED electronic relationship a demonstration of its to use as necessary. That would actually be helpful. Like, this is interspecies sex we're talking about. Yeah, it's like you can't just, like, slap it around a bit. Shocking suggestion. Doctor patient confidentiality a secret. Was again in any other like fictional universe of Star Wars, they wouldn't even bother having this. Mm -hmm. cell reproduction. Much simpler, less alcohol. Like it's just assumed that all the other people are like human. Yeah. No, they're just people paint they're just people painted a different colour. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, oh how how do you have sex with the Twilight? It's like you just have sex with them. No, like, they're just human. Don't worry about it. It's like sexually speaking, they're just humans. It's fine. Uh, like what what about about yeah. like with Watto? Is he's 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 just a human it, down there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh man. Never forget that like um the Spielberg had to 
weigh in on whether or not Watto was a Jewish stereotype. Oh my god. You know, it's like you look at Watto, it's like... Yeah, of got course. The, got the, the big giant nose and he cares about money. Mm. And he has a really offensive fucking voice. Yeah. Someone cornered Steven Spielberg and asked him about it. And he's like, well, George Lucas is my friend, so I don't think he meant that. And it's like, oh, Steven, you've probably mm. been a bit too tight there, mate. Bit naive. But George Lucas is not a subtle man. I want to talk about you. To talk? You needn't ask. Time for me is short, Siha. But any I have is yours to take. Hello. How are you feeling? See you. No worse than ever. You needn't worry. And you, you are well? I can't love a dying man. Fuck, no. No need to worry about me. How are you holding up? I'm looking forward to the end of the mission. It has been many years since I felt I could relax anywhere. I'm looking forward to the end of the mission. Decide where to go. We owe ourselves We've already done the mission, you're aware, Thane. We should pick a yeah, he doesn't know that. There must be some travel broken. He wipes his memory. Computer. I would very much like to see a desert. Oh, but the sand and its course. Do you need some? Um, have a few minutes to talk. You to ask. How are you feeling? No worse. And you, you are well? No need to worry about me. I'm looking forward to the end of the mission. I spent two good. years dead, every moment. I spent ten years dead. I, I understand. How do we get to like... strange that I should only reawaken now, when there is so much hmm. time left. The part, like, your Google search is going to be so funny. Do you so know how something? do I bang saying? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Um... I should go. As you will, see how. Thane. Do you need something? Thane, dude. Um, uh, maybe. No worse than ever. And you. you maybe the ghost here for us. I've been thinking about your illness. Understandable. Maybe that. I don't think I can do this. Love uh -oh. you now, only to lose you later. Or is it? I don't. I hope. I'm sorry. Oh no. Shepard, we made no vows to each other. We are both don't fuck this up. I have no wish don't break this up. No. If it is your wish, I will turn aside. Stay with me, Vade. No, Stay with me. How can I? Are you accidentally you? breaking up with him because you gotta figure it out? No. Yeah, nearly. Death. How would we know the value of life? Thane is so smooth. Without death, how would we know the value of life? That Thane is just turning this all the way around on Shepard. Are you so good at it? Like he's so good at like just um uh four quarters, please. I've got a relic to examine. Just come and examine it with me. Ah oh, there we go, invite Thane up. Ah thing is though, imagine if that had like four different um uh, names on it and you're like, yeah, right. <laughs> Where's the indigo? Where is it? There we go, okay. <laughs> I think if you get like enough people romance, <laughs> they can invite like um, Kelly Chambers up. Like can, invite, like, oh, you could... just she just like Shepard just like goes on the intercom to Kelly. Can you invite Thane, Morant, and maybe uh, yourself up? Also, maybe just give Liara a call and see if she's hanging around. No, what you should be able to do is just put it as like a ship wide announcement. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to join Thane and I, we just shall be like, peace with. We're probably gonna die in the next like you know hour or so. If anyone just wants to come up here and get it on, mm -hmm. if we just want like the party hardy option of just, we might all be dead in the mission that we just did. So this is no time to be approved. Look, we should all be very grateful that Zaid was the only one who died. If any of you have just like that fleeting sense of life, just come up and join in. So oh, like, yeah. We're gonna celebrate. We should all celebrate that like you'd like. Invite Thane up. Oh, I'll sit down. Look at that pose. Oh. Press B to I continue. Okay. Right, imagine if it was like um, uh, what was it now? They made it into a uh, quick time event. <laughs> we'll all. That'd bang. be amazing. We'll all bang. Okay. Never forget that's the thing that nearly killed video games. Wait. What do you mean, cell mode? What else is my option to sit? 
Oh, no let's friend. let's select music. Feel like that's a bit much. You have to trust me on this one, Carl. I know you can't hear the music. Yeah, just the swag music. Well, that's very dramatic. Well, this is some like some like techno nightclub shit. You should put on the theme song for the game. <laughs> so these are so dumb. These are so Why dumb. Might be this. Not quite, but it sounds very spacey and familiar. So what I'd love now is if you've got an influx of like renegade options and you just leave him <laughs> on red. That's the like the harshest thing you can like do in a video game is if like in um Baldur's Gate, if you can sleep with Carlac, then immediately break up with her. No. And it is the single biggest relationship drop you will get in the entire game. Like, I you can, can imagine. kill your party members. Like, killing your party members gets you less of a relationship drop than doing that you to You know what? That's less of a dick move than doing that to Garlock. Yeah, you kill me all the time in that game. It's an accident. But I had to double check when I, someone told me. I went, there's no way that it's the single biggest drop of, like, you know, party. Mm. Like, no, it absolutely is. It's like you lose straight up 100 points. <laughs> I'm going to put this, like, that... weird techno -y space yeah. sound on. Just because yeah. it sounds like the most dumb thing. Bed, rest. Hmm, rest, okay. You're not resting. Neither, what did Thane look at that? That's like when you just take your phone, like, try to put... Oh, yeah! It's the fact that his suit clips into your face. It's great. Look at that. I like... Very confused. Right, so we have the option to like haul him up. I think if you talk to him. But it doesn't seem to be giving us that option. Get a go, go on. He's just like sit or rest. Is he just keeps saying continue, doesn't it? Yeah, just press B to continue. So if anyone in chat does know. Is there like an option you've got on of like you can't see anything like too explicit? I don't think so. Is there like an option you can change? Um. That's one. That's one. Not sure. What the fuck? Like, I want to see if it's like alien ween. Right, we set the scene. Give me the alien ween. Set the music. Can we change our... Put the dress Maybe on. Like Maybe that's it, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Sh Shepard, did you not want to make an effort here? Yeah, I've got my sunglasses on. Um... Yeah. This is taking way more effort. Like, I feel like it'd be easy to actually just sleep with one in real life. <laughs> At this rate, but how much of a prima donna is this guy? How much more does engine need to be revved? If they say something like you have to like leave the room, hmm. Um. What you got? Doesn't seem to be doing anything. This is so dumb. Yeah. Unless, unless this is like a thing you can only... Maybe this is like one of the things that you can invite him up just to do this at random. Mm -hmm. But like the actual like love scene is something that happens before you start the match. So maybe go out says and start the mission again. Oh no. What is it? Uh 
Um, so it seems though, when the game faded to black and nothing happened, that was meant to be the cutscene. Oh, maybe because you're streaming? No. People have just said no. it just goes black and nothing happens. Oh, so it's a, a glitch? It's a glitch, yeah. Just a glitch that you missed it, and because you can now you can invite him up because he's because like, we're yeah, already you're... part of the relationship. So you can just do that if you want, and just have him like sat around your room, just like. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Oh, cool. Dude. Well, I guess if someone wants to see, you can go Google it. Ruin your YouTube. Uh, just like, maybe we can just bring it up. I guess if you wanna. Right? Fuck it. Like, people people came here for a certain thing, Carl. Won't be up a shepherd, but. Oh, uh, people came here for one thing, Carl. And it is those watch thing, get it on. It's the watch thing, weird. get all the shit on. Um. Let me find like the actual Rohan scene, maybe. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um. Yes. I've tried to leave the galaxy better than I've. Yeah, because there's a little conversation with him and everything. So we'll just steal someone else's YouTube video and just um. I'll just I'll not be on camera for this bit. It's just wild how they, like, yeah, it's just wild how they did that thing of just the fate of black was the things like yeah. people get really upset about this considering you know it's it's kind of what they're working towards. Mm -hmm. A little bit big thing to fuck up. Yeah, I'll just put on like a blank yeah. capture of the YouTube video and we'll play that. It'd so be like go. you know, yeah, it'd be like having like a online multiplayer game and not having any servers open for people. Imagine that. It's crazy. It's glad you know, we're not Shout out to like naughty gaming. Oh yeah, they're the ones I got all the clips for, like um, Baldur's Gate for, but like all of them were just like really pervy. Right. Yeah, look at the mods okay. of the character a lot. The, the mod of the character a lot hotter. That's great. Oh, have they? Yeah, look at it. Look. Look how much hotter their shepherd is than yours. They might have just put more makeup on them, right? Maybe. I should be at peace on the eve of battle. Stop. Don't give me a. Shout out to these guys. A shame. See, if I was going to mod my chef, I'd mod him to what I can. Jeez. I have worked so hard, <laughs> meditated and prayed and done good. Oh, look at him. Atoned. He's so mad that he loves okay. you so much. I consider my body's death and a chill settles in my gut. I'm afraid. Shame. I just, you're just so hot, Shepard. So if we got laid off camera. It's kind of gutting though for you. It is, it's character. like, that's so upsetting of like the whole thing of like, we've gone you all this way through it. to Romance Thane. And it was admittedly just that. That's all it you is, it's just that one minute cut scene of like them kissing and having a conversation. But still, that's like the that's the culmination of everything you've just been working towards. Exactly. It's kind of bullshit. Just imagine chatting someone up and then like you find, you know, pass out for the moment you actually get to kiss them. And you just wake up the next day and you're in a relationship but you don't get sex anymore. It's like, wait, what? We'll not so bang, not okay? Like, yeah, no. that's, the, that's, that's the opposite of we'll bang, okay? <laughs> we'll not bang. Well, that was, that was, you know, for all that was promised the Thane romance scene, that was the Thane romance scene, but, you know, shout out to Naughty Gaming for capturing that, and 
fuck Mass Effect Legendary Edition for being like, fade the black, oopsie doopsie glitch. The fact that, that this Legendary Edition has been just so bad. It's not very legendary. No. It's not been but a very not... legendary experience so far. It's really not, has it? Like, there are some upgrades, but it, the fact that it's, like, there's been notable amounts of glitches and flaws and weird shit sound. still going on and the sound effects and all this, yeah. Like, sound effects missing and just... And, like, the 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 not having the fix of, like, well, if you wait too long to make a decision, then Shepard's audio goes and stuff like this, like... Basic shit, considering they were all very, very apparent in the first versions of the game, and they were aware of these glitches for ten plus years. Yeah, not the best, considering it was a a full priced remaster, and not even like a twenty quid one either. Fucking hell! Yeah, like full full price. Yeah, I think it was like seventy dollars, seven seven uh, sixty quid, seventy dollars. But you got your money's worth out of it, but. Deal. Well, I mean, I just waited until it was um, on Game Pass on the like EA access thing that I get through. Oh, there Game you go, Pass, yeah. yeah. But yes, um, we will hit our sub goal for Mass Effect Three at some point. Just uh, you know, go tell all your friends to come and sub, and we'll hit that in no time. But thank you all for joining. We'll be back next Monday. We just like something that maybe can be multiplayer that can be fun, and we'll just figure it out. And we'll just play it by ear until eventually we do hit that goal. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to take a little break, play some Mass Effect 3 in the future, and just eventually go have that fight with the Reapers. Yeah, but the thing is, they can wait. Because at least two of them are on the way. It'll be fine. It's not really going to get you. I love the fact that you know, mini spoilers for the very opening of Mass Effect 3, where it's like, you still got to convince people that Reapers are like, on the way. But you killed two oh, of it's them. like, oh, time. like, really? Could they not just, like, go download, like, Legion's memory? <laughs> like, half your team have got fucking robot shit in their face. Like, just download whatever they save. Last thing, does Legion not just have, like, a constant video feed where we could just be like, look, this was the giant human reaper that the collectors were building? Thank it's you for so the frogs in chat, Shadow. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow to continue our journey into Skyward Sword. We're oh. just out of like the tutorial opening area and getting into the weeds of things now. Before we go on, I've got one idea though. Can you imagine if like for Mass Effect 3, they said the longer you wait to play Mass Effect 3 after Mass Effect 2, the closer the Reapers get in the morning. <laughs> you know, that should have been a system. That, that would have been cool, but obviously we had to wait, like, three years for Mass Effect 3 anyway. That would have been amazing. So though, it would have right? been a very flawed idea, but maybe it would have been funny to like, add into Legendary Edition instead of just, like, we kind of fixed Mass Effect 1 a little bit and then pieced out, basically. Rezzed up those textures a little bit. But, yeah. Good night, the rest everybody. Of the you rizzle the thing. Thank you for joining I'm glad that we got to see just the order. Yeah, actually, just find yeah. around, like, fuck around and find out. But I'm really it's upset so that the game just went. Yeah, your romance theme on a black screen. That glitch happened. Bye. Yeah, that that one was legitimately hilarious. It just died ten thousand deaths. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, maybe your special shepherd. Whenever yeah, someone tells like... you that you're secretly special and just the only one that could survive just some kind of anything, I don't believe them, everyone. No. I don't believe them. Actually, no, give them a chance. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Okay. <laughs> just mind explodes. Just Shepard, you managed to get that vision from the Protheans. You'll be fine. <laughs> just <laughs> smash cut to Shepard's just... Exploded brains on the floor. Oh dear. But well, thank you, everyone. Hopefully, we'll see you all soon for both Zelda and Mass Effect 3. But yeah, just hope everyone has had a nice time finishing Mass Effect 2. RIP to the guy that died. I can't remember his name, but. Uh, yeah. 
No, no, I don't think it. I don't think it began with a Z. I don't remember. It's fine. It, he, he's probably not important. It's gonna yeah. be okay, everyone. We we managed in a near perfect run. In fact, it may have been made more perfect by the fact that just Saeed died. Yeah, well, like he's the only one who died. It's like, yeah, he kind of made it all perfect run. Yeah, that's about the only one who died. <laughs> the only one we didn't give a fuck about. So he's the free bit. It's like, who gives a shit? Whatever. Uh, truly, truly true. But thank you, everyone. Hope everyone has a lovely day, evening, or night, wherever you are. Word up.